Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this very special Dacia League of Legends Winter Special Tournament, specifically an ARAM tournament, one of the first, or the first every time uh, we've done ever. Um, yeah, a special uh, uh, ARAM tournament because, you know, we thought, how about we have a snowball fight with DCA? Um, you know, you can have a nice, like, one and a half meter distance with, uh, with DCA, and then we looked outside and we didn't see much snow. We had a problem there. So you know what? We figured we are going to go online. We're going to go to ARAM because there's a bunch of snow that we can toss around. And we're going to have the biggest snowball fight the ECA can have digitally. So therefore, we have an ARAM snowball fight. And to bring you this ARAM snowball fight, to cast this ARAM snowball fight for you, there is, uh, of course, me, Pepin the Peppy. You might know me from previous tournaments that I have casted. But I brought a special guest this time. It is another member of the logo <laughs> and a very, very cool guy. To just hang out with it's uh, Chan Modlonium. Chan, how are you doing? Uh, I'm all right, thank you for asking. How are you? I'm pretty good myself. Yes, yes. Are you excited for the madness that is about to ensue? Definitely. I hope the luck is on our side. It will make us watch some crazy chaotic RAM games, hopefully. Yes, um, cool. Yeah, I'm uh, also very excited. We're going to see, uh, hopefully, a lot of snowballs being tossed uh, and, and stuff. Uh, so uh, we're looking forward towards that. Now, there have been uh, 20 enrollments, so we could make four teams. And they are going to compete in a uh, best of, well, of a two-game elimination series. Actually, I'll bring up the bracket real quick. So, our four teams are the Silent Knights. Ho Ho Hopsake, Sneeuw Snuivers, and Santa's Little Gangsters. These four teams, you already saw them on the AFK screen, but those are the four teams that are going to be competing. Now, the way this bracket works is if you win a game, you're going to move on to the semifinals. But if you lose a game, you're going to go to the loser bracket. And if you lose a second game, you're out. So that goes for any team. But if you win everything, obviously, you get to the finals and you win. So you, you, you basically, you get one free loss, you can tank one, but then you're not allowed to lose again. That's how this works. Um, yeah. So, the lobbies are being made. Are there any champions that you think, uh, uh, John, you really uh, hope you can see? Maybe there's something you think is OP in ARAM. Have you played much ARAM yourself at all? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really like playing ARAM exactly because the reason you said it's random, right? Uh, well, but I hope I see Katarina. And I think it's really overpowered right now. <laughs> Especially if, he, if she gets fed, like... Uh, it's good. It gets really crazy. Um, Mastery is a classic pick. Um, if somebody plays really good Darius, you can see just off of one kill, just gets into pentakill right through and through. But yeah, I mean, uh, it'll be crazy, I think. Yeah, you just want to see some explosions happening on the map, don't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Just like AOE ultimates. I, I want to see that. Interesting. Like, so um, you mentioned Malphite ultimate. Malphite. Yeah, Malphite very strong as well. Yeah. Now you mentioned the Katarina yeah. ult, and in fact, there, there's some wonky stuff going on with like Katarina builds currently, as far as I'm concerned. What, mm. what exactly is, is special about Katarina in preseason? Well, first of all, you can build anything apparently, and it works somehow. <laughs> um, and the, the Tiamat being changed and working with some abilities and some you know, range attacks. It has wonky combinations with certain abilities. One of the things that gives Katarina a lot of power. Uh, Omni Wamp makes her a lot stronger as well. And I mean, yeah, I mean, the the item changes have really buffed Katarina to like a crazy point. Especially, like I said, the Omni Wamp is helping a lot. As unlike. Uh, Unless you can CC chain, chain her, she isn't going down if she's fed. And that's, I think, the most broken part, part of Katarina's kit right now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, actually, one of the uh, things that are interesting because of her ult applying on hit effects, uh, mm -hmm. she works really well with like Borg and that kind of stuff. So it's, it's really, it's, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's just, yeah, that's what you already mentioned. Some of the wonkiest build that you would never expect, it's just going to do damage and, and work. And, and educate. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely a very interesting in, in preseason. Uh, like some of the the item reworks, of course, that have changed. Um, 
Yeah, Simon, I'm also curious what that's going to happen. Um, let's actually go over the basic features of an ARAM game. Um, some people might not play much ARAM, so they might not actually know um, how that works. So, uh, yeah, the basic features of an ARAM game are you spawn uh, in a single lane. There's only mid lane. There's exactly two bushes in the mid lane uh, in the middle, and there's also two bushes slightly more towards east base. Each team has a nexus, two nexus towers, an inhibitor, then one tower and another tower. That's it. You don't have an outer tower, you only have the inner... Um, actually, yeah, you have an outer tower, an inner tower, an inhibitor, two nexus towers and a nexus. And one more important thing is that after you leave the spawning area, you can never go base. You can stand in the base, you have a, a, a fountain to protect you, the fountain laser, but you will um, not be able to regen health there and you will not be able to buy any additional items until you die. That's the only way for you to get... Um, uh, to get more items. Uh, so uh, sometimes maybe we'll even see some tactical inting, people uh, executing themselves on towers just to get an extra <laughs> buy off, uh, something like that. Um, but yeah, those are the basic premises of ARAM. Did I miss something? I think I didn't. Oh yeah, there's also one more thing and that um, is uh, healing pads. Mm -hmm. um, on the map, there's four healing pads and they're basically uh, respawning every like one minute 30, something like that. And if you stand on it, you get an initial heal as well as um, uh, afterwards a redemption style uh, AOE heal that is healing any champion, so allied or enemy in that uh, circle. So uh, maybe we'll see some crazy fights going on about those circles or about these uh, healing pads as well, because they do heal you and as well, the heal and, and mana actually as well, uh, significant amounts. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll see if they can play around this very well. I'm gonna tell the lobby that we are ready because we're actually in the lobby already. Mm -hmm. Well, there's of course the Snowball Summoner spell as well, special to Aram. Which is like the kind of the theme of the tournament. I think it's really cool. Yeah, oh yeah, of mm -hmm. course. The entirely new, do you mind explaining how Snowball exactly works? It's kind of like a very long skill shot that goes linearly, and if you hit something with it, then you can just jump automatically into it, in a champion or into a minion. But yeah, it looks like a snowball fight if everybody is trying to, you know, sh shoot through each other. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Very Christmassy. Yeah, we're going to have five snowballs on either side of the either side of the yeah, the, the bridge basically because having a base, of course, is a bridge. Um, and we're gonna see if they can uh, um, make it work, yeah. Now, mm -hmm. uh, it looks like the last player is getting their mic ready real quick. So we are going to be in a slight delay for a couple more minutes. Um, yeah, so. Uh, a question from Pinda and Chet. No, uh, the matches can just start. Um, we will let you know if the game is being streamed. The game that's being streamed currently is uh, between uh, Silent Knights and Ho Ho Hopsake. So um, the other match can start as soon as they are ready. Um, keep in mind, of course, that every single champion has to be uh, running Snowball. That's the most important rule because we just want to have a good old Snowball fight. Um, yes, so um, we are watching, we're waiting for confirmation before uh, for one of the players. Uh, to start specifically one of the players of Ho Ho Hops, okay. Um, so I hope they'll be ready soon. Um, yeah. Now, you mentioned a couple of champions. You mentioned Katarina, you mentioned uh, Melfi. Like, for those champions are really strong, have a lot of like AoE damage, can like win a team fight by the press of a button. But is there also anything that you think is going to be really weak? It's going to be like really rough for a team to get in their I think composition. Uh, a very interesting thing I found like a, a month or two. Uh, uh, is, is that apparently? Can you confirm that? I, like I, that was really interesting to find out. It was really unfun because I was playing Teemo. Uh, like sorry, a, or no, so the traps, invisible traps sometimes can be seen, I believe. Oh, yeah, no, that's a very good point that you're making, in fact. Uh, specifically, uh, cannon minions have true vision for the entire allied team. Meaning yeah. that if uh, a cannon minion were to walk in a specific range of a Teemo Shroom, the Teemo Shroom is going to be revealed. Um, and yeah. the team can just clear it. So yeah, definitely uh, uh, going to be a bit harder for Teemo to get off the... 
uh, like specific plays. I think it's a very recent update as well, maybe since preseason uh, that they did that mm. because uh, Timo was just being too strong or something like Peyton, maybe uh, Peyton, um, mm. uh, which we call it. Nidalee can also do the same thing. Now we have actually entered yeah, yeah. champion, quote unquote, select. Um, let's have a look at what uh, champions were achieved by the teams. We see Slacer twenty on Shivana, the Tiger on. K6, Mr. Thijs 12 on Twisted Fate, Fixit on Tristana and Quinten 555 on uh, Misfortune. On the other side, we see Bejamsemin on Jax, Winterjas on Siver, Breaking Bard on Zillion, Krielkipje on um, Lysandra, the Ice Witch, and uh, Demortius on Caitlyn. Now, is there any champions or any set of champions that strike you here as very strong or very weak? Um, well, one thing that comes to mind in, in, immediately is Kazix is not going to get his isolation key off. <laughs> yeah, very, very um, fair. So he might want to run Draktar to make sure he's going invisible as much as possible. Um, uh, Lissandra is very effective, I believe. Uh, his Her ultimate and W is very effective in both keeping teammates alive and making sure that a lot of AoE damage is dealt. Uh, Sivir is really powerful when you have like everybody to hit with W or Q or if you need to catch someone. Mm, anything else? Well, Twisted Fate's ultimate is a bit interesting, but if you can use it, you can just kill somebody or maybe somebody's, like you said, tactically dying to the tower, you can catch them off. Yeah, indeed. I'm also at the Twisted Fate, it can be used to backdoor very efficiently because it's a single lane. It's yeah. very hard to get past each other, so backdoors are not very frequent. Uh, but Twisted Fate is one of the enablers that can, uh, if a Nexus were to be exposed, can just hop over the enemy team and uh, try and get the <laughs> Nexus that way. So um, we'll see. Maybe that happens. Yeah, very possible. Shivana is also interesting. Uh, if uh, Slazer um, builds AP, I think she can deal a very good amount of damage with her E, being AoE if she's Dragon. Yeah, a really interesting pick there as well. Yeah, uh, we have yeah, two ADCs on both sides. That's interesting as well. Yeah, now actually something I want to mention about Shivana because um, since the new like preseason, uh, they basically unlocked cooldown reduction. They, they the cap of forty percent or forty five percent is actually gone. Mm -hmm. uh, it was replaced by ability haste, uh, meaning that uh, for example, a hundred ability haste means you have fifty percent cooldown reduction. Like, you can 100% uh, more spell costs, basically, is how it works. Um, mm -hmm. So, because of that, you can get a lot of cooldown reduction. So, if Shivana were to, like, build a lot of cooldown reduction, or a lot of uh, ability haste, as, as it's now called, um, she can get off a lot of uh, ease, a lot of flame breaths, uh, and they, well, as you already mentioned, are going to do a lot of damage. So, I am interested to see if Slacer 20 is going to fully use the ability haste uh, rework, or the, the cooldown reduction rework. Or if he's going to go for a more burst-oriented build where he goes full damage and, and a bit less uh, sustained damage over time. No, yeah. interesting. Well, we can also mention Misfortune's ultimate, obviously, like the elephant in the room is there as well. I mean, a good timing of Misfortune's ultimate can devastate a fight, obviously. A very yeah. classic Aaron pick there as well. Yeah, and one of the like classic counters to misfortune is hard engage or some somebody that can really really stun lock the misfortune and get to her easily. And on the side of oh, oh, Hopsake, okay. well, there is some champions like Jax and Lissander that can do that, but there's not very much. So as long as Quinton five 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 um, chooses their um, their position carefully and their moment carefully, I think the misfortune ult can very very much be very impactful. So we'll uh, have to definitely keep an eye on that. Um, an update for the viewers at home. We are currently loading into the game. Uh, John, you should be able. John, you should be able to see uh, the game loading as well. Currently, yep. In fact, we are heading into game. There's a short freeze because like three and a half minutes needs to be like maintained. That's why we're waiting. Anyway, so um, let's have a look at the first uh, game between. Um, blah, 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 sorry, between the silent knights and Ho Ho Hopsake. Um, as I'm going to quickly fiddle around a little bit, see what I can do here. Um, yeah, so that should be a zero. Okay, there we go. Uh, okay, we see both teams now grouping and walking out of the base. So what what do we expect? Do we see expect to see a lot of like this beginning of start, a beginning of game fights, or are people going to take it more easily? 
how well they seem like they're tr taking it very easy as well like there are lots of snowballs around yeah they're really nice like christmas spirit is there <laughs> yeah as we see uh, in fact in the on the side of um um i forgot the team names my bad um the, the silent knights i think uh on on the blue side uh, we see uh that all members mm -hmm. took flash snowball and dark harvest on the other side, we see a couple, actually, a single ghost and a couple of more different summoner spells. So, what are your thoughts on that? Thoughts on that? Huh. Taking ghost for a summoner is interesting. Like maybe, like both ultimate up and ghost up, you can just either run, run and run. I don't know. <laughs> like you just you can just run as much as you want with the ghost and summoner's ultimate. Really interesting there. Um, other than that, yeah, I mean, Flash is obviously the, the thing that you always pick up, unless you're Hecarim or something. But yeah, that, that's natural. Fair enough. And uh, of course, the Dark Harvest, uh, a bit weird to see so many Dark Harvests, where only we, we see it only um, conditionally normally. So what are, what, what are your thoughts mm -hmm. on that? Why do we do that? Why do we see that now? I mean, you can get so many assists and so many like hits below 40% health. So you can stack it really, really easy. I think that makes sense. Yeah, yeah uh, especially. Right. Uh, well, actually, a lot of these champions are, you know, they do well with Dark Harvest as well, like Kazix, Misfortune, Twisted Fate, or Shivana. I mean, I think they can work through um, Dark Harvest really well as well. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I also think um, uh, that the, si the uh, Silent Knights have a very strong poke team, as we see Ben Yonsum in flashing in, getting the first kill, but Ooh. also going down. As a response, uh, that is a net gain for Ho Ho Hopsake because of the first blood goal, but uh, yeah, yep. one for one trade. Yeah, I mean, it's 100, 100 gold, bro, uh -oh. I guess. Ooh, that was a snowball. That was a snowball hitting. I'm not sure who hit it, but the person did not follow up, and I uh, tend to call that a small yeah. PP move. Um, <laughs> but hey, I agree. to each your own. <laughs> That was what I was thinking. <laughs> oh, we see the small one hitting from Beyonce. Beyonce in the portal <laughs> checks, making oh. it very easy to engage. You're getting a three man stun, followed by a lot of people with the stun from uh, Knilkip. You know, a lot of the uh, decided lights flashing away, trying to get themselves to safety, but Mr. Ty's going down as well as Beyonce once more. A one for one, but a lot of similar spells burned. Yeah, uh, well, I feel like there were, lots, there were supposed to be more kills there, but sure, lots of people with 40% health. And that's why you take Dark Harvest. Yeah, definitely. And um, um, we have to see those starting to stack up. Um, both teams actually getting up. Oh boy, here we go. Kip Kip is taking, uh, Ooh. grabbing Ooh. his chance to take out Quinto 555, but immediately gets countered. And also Kip Kip himself goes down. Um, that's what we're seeing a lot, uh, in fact. People going in, getting a kill, and immediately getting bursted themselves. And then the team fight kind of immediately stops. Interesting, interesting, yeah, really. interesting. Exactly. The red team is feeling suicidal today. <laughs> Especially Jax, maybe. <laughs> They're all kamikaze warriors. Very, very interesting. Yeah, kamikaze warriors. <laughs> uh, anyway, Ooh, both... a really interesting point to make. Tiger evolved W first. I think that makes sense. A good slow. Oh, is... here we oh, go wait. again. Bayamazamin jumping into the fight. Taking one kill, taking two kill. Now, the response is for the Team Blue. This time to jump in themselves. And that means that... A lot of players are going down. We also see that like everybody hits level 6. That means that Breaking Bart also had his ultimate available. Zillion ultimate very, very strong in this uh, game. It can save uh, people and therefore save teams. Um, yeah, a few kills in the favor of uh, Ho Ho Hopsake. And in fact, another kill in favor of Ho Ho Hopsake. is Yamsam in trades his life for Mr. Tice 12. Mm -hmm. And this allows him to get a lot of tower damage. Now we see the immediate attempt at a re-engage from Pit and 555, from the Tiger, him the Snowball, taking the kill, and also Vintias immediately going back in, as well as Krukic. And now it's a very chaotic fight, and ultimately now three people from uh, Ho Ho okay, are dead, but the Silent Knights are now pushing out and trying to get some uh, tower damage down themselves. Krukic, you're getting exploded Ooh. by Slacer 20. That's exactly why you picked Shivana. And also Dark Horse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Shivana Dark Harvest works really nice, especially if you're building AP. And this is the third time Jax is going down with a Kamikaze track and also under her, his third. Yeah, yeah, you see definitely that the side of Knights, they have a lot of poke champions. You have the uh, Shivana, mm -hmm. you have the uh, Kazix, actually with this, you already mentioned it, very interesting, the, the, the spikes evolve. Uh, you see the Twisted Fate, they can poke a lot, and that makes it sometimes very hard for Ho -Ho okay to actually properly engage a fight before being very low themselves. 
Yes, I agree. <laughs> but if they can engage, then, well, like we see in the last fight, they can't do a lot. All in on the side of Oho Hopesake is really powerful, but yeah. they need to be able to pull it off. Definitely, definitely. Now, looking at some of the builds, as we seem to have a tiny bit of time, uh, Jax not going full tank, starting with a Gore Drinker, it looks like. Um, mm. That would be the only champion on the side of Oho Opsuke that could technically build tanky. The rest is all full damage. In fact, we see full damage builds from the entire other side. On the opposite side, we also see glass cannon builds. And oh my lord, Duke, if you Ooh. really wants to go, you see the ultimate self, and you have to get it away safely. Now, to be honest with you, flashing in as Duke, if you actually goes down, to be honest with you, also pays for the engage with his life. Now, we see the re engage, <laughs> fix it, going in, taking one kill, but it's a zillion ult that keeps Blaking Bart alive. Blaking Bart now full stunned up, but he gets the explosion onto Vix together with. Um, the Mortis, but the both of them now also go down. Now only Vintias is standing for Hoops, okay, and he is in a 1v3 situation and ultimately the side of the take away a ace for two kills. Very clean play. Nice. Yes. Uh, it felt like it was going for the so going good for the red team, but uh, the blue team was really good at you know turning it over. Oh, oh another boy. Huh. <laughs> Bayamusman looking to clean up. That's one kill, that's two kill, and there yeah. it is number three. To get everything to kill, you're cleaning up the house. And that means that now suddenly the momentum is back in the favor of Hoho Ops, okay. Yeah, you definitely don't want Jack to have a lot of kills. Especially now that he's going Gore Drinker. Now, as you mentioned, there are lots of funky stuff happening with the new items. And one of the things is uh, Gore Drinker Tiamat. For some reason, if you hit the <coughs> active of Gore Drinker, then Tiamat hits every single target the Gore Drinker hits as well. That's really interesting combo. Yeah. And I think that's what Jax is going for. TMLD rework to also work for ranged champions, but to also work on any instance of damage that you do with an effect that is not from TML itself. Therefore, uh, ranged champions with Renan's Hurricane to also proc it on all their bolts. Uh, Saver were to proc it on all her um, ricochet procs on every single minion individually. And Ezreal ult will proc it on every minion hit by his ult. Uh, individually, oh, here we see the engage. We have him hitting someone to the tiger. The tiger is not long for this world, but we see the counter engage with the misfortune ult. The QKP going Ooh. in using the <coughs> uh, ultimate on the self, and then ultimately also the Zidian ult. Only oh, give you life, but that is a massive damage by Slacer 20 to blow up two and almost three. Now also, the third one is going down, and Slacer 20 is looking for the clean engage, a triple kill. Uh -huh. Now, just flame breath after flame breath, and they're doing damage. Immortal is in panic, quadra kill for the Slacer, and that is another kill. ace in favor of the Silent Knights. I mean, we said look out for Shivana E, but it's even more dangerous, apparently. All those kills, I believe, except last one, was taken by Shivana E, really doing a lot of damage, especially with now Dark Harvest stacks. Oh boy, Beelzman, Hink the Snowball, going in once yeah. more. He does not want to quick to have this match calm down. And we see the engage paying off. Kill Kick, getting a double kill, in fact, Three kills now in favor, except that uh, Kilkip himself is traded back. So a three for one in favor of Oho Ops, okay? The kill score is 21 to 18 at nine minutes. I think this classifies as a clown fiesta. Oh, no, never mind. The Tiger <laughs> going in. Finding the execute because uh, Caitlyn was actually isolated. You said it wasn't going to happen, but there uh. the isolated kills are still possible. Yes. Well, very early, but they can still happen. Definitely. And we still see a lot of poke that. But yeah, the general vibe of the game was that um, the blue team attacks, or well, actually the red team attacks, does a suicide attack almost all the time, <laughs> then blue team can um, answer to that, oh. and once everybody is responding, oh wait. Yikes, the tiger feeding NC, and in fact he gets the ult proc on Zillion, and he doesn't even go down, so ultimately a very good play by the tiger. now. Um, we see that three kills are already traded, four kills are, and that's the fifth one, another ace. Yes, very, very strong play. The Tiger, yeah. I did not expect him to get out there, but he did enough damage, he did escape, and it definitely paid off. We see the first Nexus Towers being hammered on. This is looking rough for Ho Ho Hopsake. Okay. Oh, and you see? Yes. Well, yeah. This yeah. might look very Tactical weird. Tactical suicide. Exactly, but that was just so he can get the bio without giving the enemy gold. Krilkip, you're getting blown up by the tiger, but the tiger is not enough damage before Krilkip you can. Zonja's Krilkip is very low now, but that must mean that two kills go in favor of Hoho Ops, okay. Um, yeah, this is looking a bit rough. How does uh, Hoho Ops, okay take this back? I mean, I believe the only way you make this work oh. is make sure that every single... Oh, oh. 
Well, make sure don't eat up Shyvana's ease, even though it's very difficult. Oh, <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Spicy Shyvana is. And he goes on to the Shyvana, but Shyvana is still pretty oh. tanky, and she does a lot of damage. So, um, Beelzebub is now looking for the full retreat. In fact, he is going to jump back towards Breaking Bark. Now, the three of the players from Ohops, okay, are about half health, making the next team fight probably go in favor of the side of Knights. Um, yeah, especially yeah. since they can, like, Hulk them to death, apparently. Yeah, we see uh, Slacer20 also going for a very um, burst heavy damage build with the highest amount of uh, AP you can have from two items. Um, and now, uh, excluding, of course, Ravenous Death Cap. Um, also, building the Cosmic Drive. Yeah, I actually got the name correct. The Cosmic Drive, which also gives mm -hmm. 30 uh, ability haste, which is uh, one of the biggest you can get from a single item. So, he does need cool. to do a lot of burst damage and a lot of uh, free at high frequency. We see Breaking mm -hmm. Bark going down. Um, might actually. Oh, there we go. Slacer looking for the Flame Breath, but it's not gonna hit. But uh, anyway, so Breaking Bark going down might actually mean the end of the game. The Tiger going in, trying to get damage, and. Shiver going down. Now, here, here goes Kilkeep. He's self ulting Zonjas, and he ends up not finding enough work and is looking like the end of the game. Breaking Bart yeah. respawning. Maybe he can do something. Here we go. Self ulting. That's one kill for, in fact, Kilkeep. You're getting the uh, execute with the Nexus, but Slacer hits the Nexus for the very last time. And uh, that's GG. This decided Knights taking the first game uh, away from. Uh, Oh, hops, okay. That's GG. That is indeed GG. Now, um, yeah. Yes. What, what very made, interesting match. Yeah, very interesting match. What made um, <clears throat> the side of the Knights win this game, do you think? Is there like a specific thing you can point out? Oh, Shivana is. <laughs> um, yeah, 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 yeah. Straight up Shivana eat in the face too many times. I mean, yeah. a summary of the game, Shivana is. I'm pretty sure Shivana is made more damage than every single other champion in the game. I mean, at least I can guess that's the case. But yeah, I mean, you can't all in if you have, you know, 30% health. And that's what was needed by the red team. And they just couldn't do it. Yeah, we see um, Bamsamin and Breaking a Wild Bard saying uh, Shivana did a lot of damage. And that is definitely <laughs> true. Um, well... Yeah, so, um, uh, yeah, we see also see a question, our, our characters are chosen randomly, that is true, uh, you're allowed to swap, uh, you're allowed to get a random character, in fact, that's the only way to get your character. Now, um, I'm not sure, the other game seems to still be going, in fact, let me have a look if I can find some of the champions, we see that there is a Teemo in that game, and a Nivea, a Yasuo, <laughs> um, I think also a Katarina, is that correct? Yeah, Ooh. also a Katarina. Um, maybe we can actually dive into the game real quick. Let's uh, see if we can make that work before the game ends. Um, just to have a, a look at the last glimpse. Uh, the next game that we're going to watch is, is the losers final. The, basically the, the losers match of the first two matches. That guarantees that every single team at least gets spectated once. Um, am I, are we in the correct game right now? I'm not sure. I don't think we are. No, this is not the correct game. In fact, there's more people playing. Aram than I thought, so the Katarina is not in the game. <laughs> but oh, this one awesome. should be correct. Spectate game. There we go. Now we should go to the right game. Um, yeah, so so actually something I want to note as well, because we saw from the side at night, we saw five Dark Harvest. We also saw that that ended up winning the game. So is five Dark Harvest the way to go? Hmm. Or is it actually worth to take all the summoner spells at all? I mean, if you can poke... Uh, well, Dark Harvest makes a lot, a lot of sense. And, um, well, you can, like we said, stack it up very, very fast. So, it's definitely better than what you would have for normal games. Especially since, well, a lot of those, you know, require you to have some time. You know, wait some time, like conquer or press the attack. And you don't have that much time in Aram usually, so um, Dark Harvest is working really well there as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, just the rate at which you can stack that stuff is uh, really, really impressive. Um, I think this is the way that it should be. Uh, if you have a glance over here, yeah, uh, there we go. 
Okay, so we're watching the Sneeuw Snivers versus Santa's Little Gangsters. Um, we see that the Nexus is almost exposed from uh, Santa's Little Gangsters, but they are still fighting valiantly as Cubicle goes down. Pinda on the Lucian, um, I think a very comfortable pick for him to be honest, and um, he seems to be doing some work, except now he's dead. That's the cost of curse of Iron Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he died for five times during the whole match, and the five, fifth time was exactly after we checked in on him. Yeah, exactly. So now we see uh, Timo. Uh, we also see that um, the cannon main, or the uh, super main in this case, has true vision, finding the Timo shrooms, making it very hard for Anilsa to get some like, very significant work done. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, let's see. We see the uh, Ulysia on, on Braum and Cubicle on Yasuo. And that definitely has potential for like massive Wombo combos. On the other side, mm -hmm. we see uh, Henway Ayas on, uh, on um, what you might call it, uh, Nivia together with Alt on Poppy. And that, that has a very interesting interaction between the, the Nivia wall and the Poppy uh, stun. Oh boy, here we go. Uh, mm -hmm. Ayas hitting a snowball as well as Alt. Alt going in further, deeper, and he wants to keep going. He's very tanky as a puppy, but he does take a lot of chunk damage and he decides to walk away. Anyway, mm -hmm. the point I was making is that Anivia can put out a wall behind somebody. Puppy can immediately smack the person into the wall for a free stun. So that might be a play that we see happen. Um, yeah. Uh, another inter interesting thing I find is that Lucian isn't necessarily very good in area Because he isn't like uh, does a lot of AOE damage or anything like that. But it feels like um, this one is working through and through. Even though he has a pressed the attack, he seems like he had the impact on the game. Like 11, 5, 16. Really nice. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, what you need to do with Lucian and Aram, I believe, is to find those ex individual skirmishes. Stay on the outskirts of a fight, mm -hmm. see where you can pick off people one by one. We see a lot of snowballs landing. See if we can get a follow up. In fact, we are not. It was just a rouse to scare away. Uh, so snipers, new snipers, and here we go, Ooh. the flip onto Pinda, Pinda in, in, immediately dead as Lucian is not able to escape. Now we see the engage continues, Alt going down, as well as the Swain from Guilty Seagull looking in a rough spot, he flashes away, it means that it's the King Mark away, now the chase actually goes down and ultimately it is two kills in favor of uh, Santa's little gangsters and one in favor of the new side. but the engage must go on, in fact we see now two traded back for the new snipers and also only one for so it evens out, but now Ayas is very strong, and Ivia currently very, very strong in the meta, and also so is um, Kaisa, and together they look like they have it in them to take the uh, team fight in their favor anyway. Ooh, that's a good snipe from Obi mm. getting the egg out of uh, Ayas. Hmm. Oh, yeah, nine steps. Really oh, oh yeah, yeah, and he goes down. <laughs> yeah, the classic Timo Shroom. <laughs> Yeah, even if you have true sight, it works sometimes, apparently. Yeah. That's really nice to see. Yeah, something, something that... Um, oh boy, the snowball hits, oh. and that's the end of Obi right there. Pinda now looking to continue to engage onto Mr. Marking Your Aim, but he is not in range, and Mr. Marking Your Aim is a cinch. He don't want to chase. Anyway. Yes. <laughs> now we see. Um, as long as Timo can fight... Um, where no minions are, the shrooms will not be found. And because uh, nine steps of uh, nine taps was um, walking too far forward, there were no minions to detect the the, the shroom, and therefore he died. So yes, uh, let's look at the yeah, item. Yeah, I mean, really interesting is that. Hmm. Huh. Um, is Timo's to side, I feel. Timo didn't go for burst apparently, but that makes sense considering that there are um, Poppy and Swain on the other side, you know, just make sure that they're getting true damage, they're burning through, that makes sense. Um, other than that... Ooh, some the spicy Lucian. ultimates there. A lot of poke damage there from the Lucian. Uh -huh. um, I see Swain has gone straight to Rabadons. Maybe he might have, you know, gone for something more over time, more like um, oh, oh, bruisery, healthy. To oh. in fact land the stun that I was talking about, and that also results in a kill onto yes. Ulysia One. Uh, brand going down. Hmm. Yes, and the is very powerful these days. Well, it wasn't the champion that was played for like years now, and well, 
Yeah, I it's agree. Her if glory you, is the glory days, I guess. Yeah, if you weren't Frogon, you wouldn't play it. But now suddenly it's a very, very powerful champion. Uh, we see that <laughs> a lot in like high elo. So the Q, as uh, I has decided that it is his time to die. Maybe. Never mind. He's just <laughs> still alive because Anivia has a thing. Um, and that seems to be the end of the game. It's all flashes for the Nexus, and there we go. That is our second GG of the tournament. Uh, meaning that we can go on to the second phase if I am able to find myself back. There we are. Hello. Okay. That was uh, the second game that we just uh, spectated uh, the end of. Um, both games going in favor of blue team. Is there an inherent favor for blue team, or uh, do you, is that not true? <laughs> uh, like uh, in champions? In I don't know. Uh, we both we saw uh, blue team win twice now, so I'm not sure what would be advantageous since the champions are all random. But uh, something definitely went right for blue team twice. Well, well. I heard like some people don't really like seeing the backs of their champions. They rather see their faces. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know if there are any other, like um things that is going on for blue or red side in AM. That could be the case for normal summoners rift games. You know, um, where you have different priorities for different champions. First pick, last contra pick. But yeah, I don't think that's like the case in AM matches. Feels like a coincidence to me. But well. We have more matches to come. Maybe all of them will be blue side, and then we can come up with some conspiracy theory for blue side Aram. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to see. Um, in fact, we have a very small sample size, so claiming that blue side always wins Aram from these two games is very, very extreme. Um, mm -hmm. So, twenty-five percent chance. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So it's definitely still um, by luck, by chance, uh, possible. Um, yeah, so we're going to go into the next game. The next game that we're going to spectate will be a Ho Ho Hopsake versus the Santa's Little uh, Gangsters. Um, mm -hmm. uh, that's a loser's game. Uh, so the two losing teams uh, now go against each other. This is to ensure that we at least see one full game from each team. The other two teams, the winning teams, are going to go up against each other um, right uh, now. In the other half, the bracket side at Knights versus the Snail Snivers, both managing to take the first win. In fact, let's um, bring up the bracket real quick. Uh, here you see the matches that are going to happen, meaning that the loser of this match that we're watching is out of the tournament. The loser um, yeah. uh, takes a second loss, you're only allowed to take one loss, uh, after two losses you're out. The winner of this match will continue to the loser's round two, and they will play against the loser of the semi-finals. Um, so that's a very interesting path that still needs to happen. I noticed it's saying interesting a lot, but yeah, it's very interesting. Um, I'm just going to give the signal that uh, we are ready so that the teams can start. Now, I am noticing that they are the other way around. So I will have to fix that in OBS. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, so I will have to fix that. Can you, like, uh, go into detail? What do you uh, want to see from those teams? Or, like, is there anything specific that you think that it will? Uh, well, the depends on the champions oh um you they're random sometimes like we said some champions are weak some champions are really really strong oh we have the champions right now we can go through them yes definitely huh. so mr Ooh. king mark in on jace ash uh with yone and rel as well as shen coming in and then the other side we see uh jinx tristana rakan uh vladimir and um Zyra is the last pick. Anything standing out here? Anything that we are curious about? Well, I feel like the red team is... I mean, you don't want that team to reach late game. Definitely <laughs> not. You have Jinx and Vladimir and Tristana. And Jinx and Vladimir can deal some heavy AoE damage. You don't want that. Yeah. Um, if you're a blue team, you want to close the game as quick as possible. Definitely. Especially since you have Jason and Ash, which don't scale that well. You really want to be careful there. Make sure that you're, you know, scoring kills really, really quick. 
Yeah, yeah. Now, one of the important things to have a look for, of course, is the poke damage that both teams can bring to the table. And Jace is a break that can do a lot of poke damage. And as Ash actually has the same thing, can do a lot of poke damage. On the other side, we see Zyra that can do a bunch of poke damage. Uh, Vladimir also uh, can use like his, his Sanguine Pool to like go in, do a bunch of poke damage, Sanguine Pool back out, and in that, maybe that way try to stake some damage. So we're going to have to see mm -hmm. poke, well, uh, poke damage is the, the name of the game until late game. And after end of late game, poke damage is not going to matter as much anymore because uh, players have a lot of sustain or they can more easily execute the targets that they find. Um, so I'm interested in that. Also, Julicia here on the rail. Um, mm. New champion. Do you know how she works? Yes, I um, saw her like for, in four or five games. I feel like she is strong right now, especially the AoE stun thing that she has. Very really interesting thing there. Um, ultimate, like she has lots of CC, like tremendous amount of CC. And she's very tanky as well. She can break shields. Yeah. Uh, well, we can argue that her kit is overloaded maybe, <laughs> but looks like a strong pick to me. Yeah, yeah. Knowing from uh, actually looking at a database, um, Rel is not performing very great. Uh, at the moment. In fact, she is at a 45% win rate, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and this is, I believe, that's because she is mm. very tanky indeed, and she does provide a bunch of utility and CC, um, but she does not at all do any damage. If she goes in on her own and nobody else follows her, there's nothing happening. Uh, and uh, comparing to a, a Leona mm. or a Nautilus, this is like a little bit weaker in, the, in that case. Uh, but yeah, as you said, she's very mm. strong against... Um, uh, against shields and something that I want to see is how this uh, rail is going to be used in conjunction with the Yone because rail's ult pulls people towards her it's a, a gravity field quote unquote mm. is how, how it is described um, so maybe like if you get a rail ult and then a Yone ult over that like that's a way that you can make rail work I was uh, thinking about like maybe an Orianna combination with rail can also work now we don't have an Orianna here but think of some something like that that can actually work um, yeah, yeah, that's definitely something that can happen, especially well, you can even have extended combos with Shen as well. You can have Rel cast her ultimate, then Shen can taunt every single one of them, and then once they're following Shen, y Yone can have his ultimate with his A up, and then that's tons and tons and tons of damage and tons and tons and tons of CC. Very, very interesting. Would like love to see that. <laughs> Let's see if we can get a very, very high place going on. Um, uh, on the rift as we are still in spectator delay that's still a thing even in aram so we'll be there in 10 seconds when we start into the loading screen um now one more question about shen uh because shen has an ultimate that gives a shield and that shield skills with ability mm. power and in fact i played an aram game today myself where i played <laughs> shen and i went full ability power shen to get a massive shield um are you expecting to see Ooh. tank shen or shield shen <laughs> oh well that's interesting. Maybe a hybrid can be interesting, really, because um, still there with the new item changes, I feel like you can really be a bruiser AP with um, Cosmic Drive or Demonic Embrace or Rift Walker's incredible item. I feel like it's like a game changer. Um, Shen can look into those, um, like he, he can become a bruiser type. That would be interesting. But I feel like um, Tank Shen is always there as well. Maybe his ultimate would be, you know, a bit useless. Definitely other tanks are better than Shen if Shen can't use his ultimate. But yeah, I mean, there are definitely a lot of possibilities with this Shen. Yeah, so I agree. Uh, other I, than that, I, I think Shen on um, Summoner's Rift is yes. very strong because of his ability to quickly move to, uh, quickly impact another side of the map. So he can use his ultimate to mm -hmm. turn around the fight in bot lane, for example. Now, this mm -hmm. is not as prevalent in, in Aram. Uh, his ultimate still is very strong at like shielding somebody and teleporting to them. But he is 90% of the time already going to be in the fight. So he's just going to stand still in the fight. Where else he could also be dealing more damage or CC, providing an auto attack shield, those kind of things. So his ultimate is definitely harder to use in this, uh, in this game mode. So maybe I think Tank Shen in general is going to be stronger as we have loaded into the next game between uh ho ho hopsake and um uh, santa's little gangsters in fact i see that they are the wrong way around so let me just swap that like this there we go um 
yeah, so the reason it's all gray and or like all dark and, and waiting is because we are um, making sure that the three and a half minute delay is still valid. Um, in fact, leak apparently loads. We, we loaded in quicker than the uh, the team had in a, in a loading screen, so that's why we are um, still waiting for a couple of seconds. So um, yeah, let's have a look at uh, the summoner spells and the um, what you would call them the um, keystones. There we go. The Do runes? we see anything? Yeah, the runes and the keystones. Yeah. Do we see anything? Uh, anything of there? In fact, definitely less. Dark Harvest than last time, but anything else that is worth pointing out? Mm, well, feels pretty standard to me, except the Shed's Guardian Keystone. It's actually, that's nice actually, because you can protect more people, especially, well, Shen usually takes Grasp of the Undying, but that's not really useful since you're not, you know, looking into 1v1 trades. So that's like smart pick, I think. Other than that, um, I see Dark Harvest and Jace smart pick, especially if you're playing for Poke. Uh, Vladimir has um, electrocute. Usually they go phase dredge, but um, well, so if you have ultimate chaos, then uh, a phase rush isn't really that necessary. Uh, other than that, feels pretty um, standard. And um, you have hill of place for Ash. That can happen. Uh, maybe you maybe you could have looked into. Um, I forgot the English name. What is the um, the AoE, but it's AoE and also is a Meteor. I forgot the name of that piece, though. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, Meteor, and there is Conqueror. I'm not sure which one you mean. Is it What tree is it in? Uh, it's blue uh, Meteor, Star Strike kind of thing. There's, there's yeah, Meteor, or like, what, what, what do you call it? Arcane Comet. You Meteor, mean? yes. Arcane, Arcane Comet. Ah, Arcane Comet, there yes. There you go, yeah. Uh, I can comment. Could have been a choice. She could have gone for Halo Blade. It's more like a single target thing. So maybe that's that could have changed, but that's fine as well. Uh, I mean, Meteor doesn't. Uh, the Arcane Comet doesn't really change that much. But yeah, we are in the game now. Yes, we have loaded we have in. The items. Uh, in fact, uh, we are slightly behind now. So let's speed up. The... So there we go. Now the teams have both items, and they are walking into the lane. Uh, Mr. King Ragnar huh. Ain starting with uh, coach shot level three, so everything starts with everything. First snowballs are hitting, and again, it looks like the teams are playing a little bit passive in level eight, level one. Mm. Yeah, I mean there's snowball fighting right now. It's fun and Christmas. Uh, another interesting thing that I want to. Uh, oh, oh wait. Oh, here we go. I guess the player getting called out by the uh, tones from Anilsa, but it's not enough to get the kill. Here we go. Jumping forward, trying to finish off the shed, but it's not enough, and he goes down himself. A bit of an over uh, engage from the Mortius cost him his life, and the first blood goes to Jace. Yes, well, unfortunately, you can see that they're not dealing a lot of damage during the early game, and well, you can't really engage fights like that. And then you have three level Vladimir, three level Tristan, and three level Jinx. But yeah, that's something that's chaotic. I mean, it's fun for us to watch, but not <laughs> necessarily fun for a red team to go through. Yeah, indeed. We see the Mortis has now respawned. Anilsa still very low. Mr. King Mark no Ain still very low. So, um, until the blue sun. Oh, never mind. Here we go. Beyond of Min looking for an engage. Lisa actually getting tagged by the explosive charge from the Mortis. But the Mortis is not AL. He's able to detonate it, but it's not a lot of damage because AL is a very tanky champion. So, some poke damage back and forth, but nothing much happening just yet. Huh. Well, I still. <laughs> I found it interesting that the red team can answer as much as they can. Especially Rakan is going through and then coming back and Vladimir is going in, but they're doing poke damage. Whoa. That's something that you'd expect from blue team. Oh. Never mind, we see another engage. Bilsman going in as you said, but he gets called out and he is dead. Now Bilmort is jumping forward, but the target he wanted to go for is already dead. Meaning that he just jumped, does not reset. Now we see the disengage from both sides, but Kyubuko looking for a little bit more poke damage. And ultimately it is a clean kill. Actually, no, a one for one trade, my apology. Uh, both teams get a kill. Yes. Uh, in, uh, a very nice thing that I see is both Ash and Jace went for the tier, meaning that they'll be looking into doing a lot more bulk damage than they would normally do in Summoner's Rift. Uh, that's nice to see. That's smart pick, I think. Yeah, definitely. 
Now, the first deaths have come in, but they were very early, meaning that there's not going to be a lot of change in builds just yet. Um, mm -hmm. Rel picking up next to the Guardian Horn, actually upgrading some of the things, getting a cloth armor. So, nothing very much just yet, but we'll have to see what the builds go uh, after. It's still yes. calm before the next storm. Teams pushing back and mm. forth a little bit, looking to pick up some farm, looking to get some pressure on the enemy tower, because that's ultimately what you want to do. You know, ultimately want you to kill if you want to win the game. And um, yeah, we see both teams trying to get that done. Mm -hmm. Oh, there yes, we go. Very... Right. Nice. <laughs> it's really important Jace can deal po as much poke damage as he can so that the Yone or Ash can finish them off. Ooh, that is a and lot of poke I damage. I think he, he is doing, yes, he's doing his share of poking. It's really important for blue team because otherwise they might have some troubles finishing their targets off since they're all in other than Yone and Shen isn't that powerful. Yeah, indeed. So, um, the healing pad spawned for Winter Yas. He's getting some health back. But yeah, we see how much work that Jace is going to be doing uh, throughout this game. Already hitting a few shock plots after uh, after another. Um, really hurting. Uh, um, oh, oops, okay. Wait, it's still on the wrong way around. Hang on. It's just not different. Oh. Great. Oh. Meanwhile, yeah. we have some action going on there. A lot of ultimates, a lot of damage. Oh, that's a Misty on ultimate, that's unfortunate. <laughs> okay, anyway, I fixed it. Now the names are the correct way around. My bad. Uh, yeah, we see a lot of them being used and the net gain for... Oh, oops, okay. Taking away a lot of health and a lot of lives from <coughs> um, Santa's um, uh, little gangsters. And now also getting about half the tower for that. Here oh, comes the re-engage. And those little gangsters have oh. respawned and they are coming back. They are looking to fight, but they see. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Hopsake, oh, Hopsake is managing to disengage for now. That's a good Ash Girl. Oh, the Morty nice is ultimate. jumping, but he'll keep you. Get stabbed. It's not enough to kill him, but again, he goes lower and lower. Meaning that in the next fight, he's just gonna get executed. Here we see Yone going for more poke damage, as well as the volley from Ash dealing more poke damage again. And Mr. Marking Wayne finishing off uh. the Mortius, sending him back to the respawn pad. It is just so rough, man. Playing against so much Yes, work. that's really nice to see. Yeah, well... Well, the name of the game for us has been Poking during the last two games, I think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Poke is a very, very impactful in the early stages of the game. And we see that uh, until this point, uh, Santa Solar Gangs is just able to use, uh, effectively use the poke that they have in their team comp to gain pressure and... and uh, Something like that in the in the fights and in on the, to the the, the, the backline of uh, Haha ha, Hopes. Okay. <laughs> That's a difficult name to pronounce. I I, I feel this, feel sympathy for you. <laughs> <laughs> He'll keep you now looking oh. to take take down Obi. Obi had not died before, so probably just looking to spend some gold at a uh, chill about a uh, chill time to die. Not costing his team very much right now, but Demortius is posing a little bit more aggressively, looking for that damage, knowing that the Ash is not there. Beyond has been going in, getting a lot of work done on a lot of the Embers with a lot of CC. Demortius now jumping forward, getting a kill, getting a kill, jumping forward again. Now Cubicle, landing a 3 man Yone ult, getting a lot of counter damage, and he actually takes down Demortius, and he gets out. Very, very well played by Cubicle, and the Snowball, but he's probably not looking to fight more. Um, that defense, yeah. the, the tower that he uh, wants to defend very, very effectively um, as one of the most prevalent damage dealers to those towers, Amy Demortius is now down. Um, oh, here we go. Obi, landing the Ash Girl to Vintio. Vintio uh -huh. having trouble. And all members from Hello Hopes okay, are very, very low. Meaning that Obi might be able to clean up here. Takes a second kill, takes a third kill, takes a fourth kill. And <laughs> only Demortius is now alive. Obi, will he get the Penta? I doubt it, but you never know what happens. I force it, but I, I say, force it. Force That's it, well, fun. they're definitely looking to force it. Demorti is feeling the need to rocket jump out of there. In fact, landing the snowball back in, and he goes forward. I don't know why, oh. but he does it anyway. Mr. King Buckley picks up the last oh. kill. Obi is denied the oh. Penta kill. The tower goes down. Oh, boy. Oh, well, it wasn't going to be a Penta kill. The two people had already respawned. 
Yes, a very clean execute from Mr. King Mark Noain, managing to uh, dodge all the damage and get a free reset out there. Um, again, a very convenient time to die for Mr. King Mark Noain because there's not much pressure loss. Um, ha Ho Ho Hopsake okay. was already looking to retaliate a little bit, so now he just gets to restock his mana, restock his health, get some items under his belt, and then come back in with even more poke damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ash and Jace is going full. Poke damage apparently oh. with Ash going lethality. Aha, that's a nice Rakan playing there. Fight. In fact, look, if you're looking to go forward, ooh, using his Tango Pulse on, escape a lot of that. He been using his Grand Entrance to get a lot of TC down. And actually, that is a very, very strong Mumbo combo. Breaking Bard doing the damage with the knock up as well. And then Mortius looking to go forward, but the tower damage is a bit too much. Kill Kippy now taking two towers, but he manages to get out. And ultimately, an ace. Very, very well done. Mm. Yeah, that was an incredible ladder real ultimate by the way. I feel like Krilkepai that really played and made the um, like the game changing role there. Really nice by Krilkepai. Yeah, Krilkepai managing to uh, hit a four or five man Hemo Plague and enough damage to turn the entire fight uh, immediately immediately in towards the favor of Ho Ho Okay, Now we see that uh, Santa's little gangsters have respawned once more. They are looking to retaliate because that's that's how the ebb and flow of Aram goes. You die, you respawn, you have full health, now you have the pressure. So Kilkipi needs mm -hmm. to wait for his ultimate to come back up. It's about halfway down now and he needs to look for the next engage. See if he can make it work again. Actually, yeah, I mean... The health <laughs> bars from uh, Ho Hoops again are restocked very, very well also because of the uh, Vladimir, of course, now we see that uh, Beelzemin thought about going in once more, but he goes down immediately. Now, the ultimate from Zyra managing to get a lot of work down together with uh, Demortis managing to pick up a single kill. Demortis then jumps out because the resets. Now, Demortis going back in, landing the snowball, uh -huh. and in fact, he manages to dodge the taunt from Shadow. He gets hit, but like, Susana, it doesn't matter. And then, that is a very, very clean engage, managing to, to pick up kill after kill, and only Alisa, uh, Anilsa is, is managing to like, well, kind of waddle away while being bombarded with auto attack after auto attack after auto attack, and Vinci is missing the ultimate, but we're going <laughs> forward. In fact, the flash from Heemkut, you're managing to um, uh, transfusion the kill into his favor. Uh, that looks like an inip going down in favor of ho ho -Oh okay. As Yes, ho ho -Oh okay. I feel like he's playing really clean this game. Both with Tristana and James and Vladimir and Zyra. Oh, I feel like ball. they're really comfortable to fix. Uh huh. <laughs> oh. And on the other side, the more, a breaking bar going down by a uh, shock blast from Jace. But yeah, we see the uh, the eagerness from Hugh Cole and, and from uh, Santa's little gangsters to fight. But definitely a lot of work being done, as you were mentioning, by Ho Ho Opsuke. Finding those tiny little windows where Tristana can jump in, get a kill, jump back out. That's very impressive mm -hmm. by the Mortis. Yeah, it's really, really clean. And, well, they will have a lot of difficulty with killing Vladimir, and even if they do, ooh, nice damage of oh, Draktar and Muramana for you there. Yeah, that was a lot of damage right there. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's just Jace, Jace stuff, Jace things you see there. I definitely but agree. Yeah, it will be really difficult to kill Vladimir. Yeah. Just please go. Let's see if we can find out how many stacks of Dark Harvest Jace has racked up. In fact, it is 12. 12 stacks oh. of Dark Harvest. On the other side, we see that Breaking Bard has managed to get 16. So, um, boss above boss, uh, as we say in the Netherlands. Uh, Bear has been getting locked down by Ooh. the Ash Drill, but he is still a Raka, meaning that he can jump out of a lot of danger at a lot of times. Uh, and therefore, uh -huh. he does not go down. But uh, not much health yeah, has yeah, been yeah. lost from the side of uh, Santa's Little Gangster, so. And, and the, the, on the side of Hohovsky, all of them are on very low health. So I'm expecting the next fight to go in the favor Ooh. of Santa's Little Gangsters. Yeah, well, Santa's Little Gangsters have a good siege composition with Jace and Ash. And I don't think Hohovsky can feel safe under their turret but as they can. They they, well, <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo, well sure. He Why is not? alive. <laughs> And Vintiel's going in, executing himself, deciding that it's better to respawn now than respawn later. Kill Kipje and uh, Breaking Bard, now all of my, uh, both of them in fact, are very very low. My apologies for this random Dutch word in there. But they're looking to hold on to the next hour. In fact, Kilkipje <laughs> going in, using heal play, but definitely going down. Cubicle now also going, looking for the kill onto Breaking Bard, Breaking Bard, and Kill Kipje will be respawning both individually now. Slightly later than the rest of the team, an inip in response for SLG uh, as, a, as a revenge for the, uh, uh, their own inip that they lost earlier. And they're looking to press on to the Nexus Towers. Oh. 
Oh boy, Mr. King Bakuwe anyway, doing a lot oh, of damage. Nice. Do not stick kill now. Hell, following up the damage with her ultimate and her engage. And uh, it is enough to pick one or two up. Now, only Bayamosman is alive for now. He is managing to hold on for a very long time because there's not a lot of damage left. And in fact, he takes the kill to the ship because of the tower. This means that Knuckip and Breaking Bart now can tank. Uh, well, tank can just pick up the final kills and resulting in an ace, whereas two are alive in favor of Ho Ho Hopsake. Whew. Yes, this 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 match is really nice. You you can feel the match turning around and changing ties and changing sides. Really really, really fun to watch. I, I think um, well we know how both inhibitors down, and well we'll see what goes from there. Ace is upping his poke game. Ash there as well. Really interested in seeing what's going down after this. Yeah. Yeah, Ash as well is a relatively interesting build, building fully for Poke. That's why you see the Revenant's Hydra as well as the display of Draktar uh, coming in. Um, but the thing that... Uh, oh, there we go. Cubicle looking directly to go for But you know, he takes some damage. He takes the uh, Ash up to the face as well, but it is not enough for him to go down. He can Ash now start sustaining back up. Um, but that's very difficult. Because what I was going to say is that the Poke game from Mr. King Mark 8 and Obi has been very, very on point. The health bars from... Uh, yeah. Ho Ho okay, have been dwindling over time, every time, before and, and after each fight. Oh, here we go, Kukup, you're looking for a very big uh -huh. hero play onto two members. He, he's gonna do a lot of damage, Wilsman, looking to see a lot of members. And in fact, Ulysia is going down, uh, in, yeah, as, as the only one, as Winterjas um, uh, and Beyamosman managed to safely live after the very risky engage by Beyamosman. Um, yeah, that's a man advantage. Now, also the Roots landing on Obi. Obi is an Ash and is not going to get away from uh -huh. that. Now, the Mortis going all the way to the back line. Hitting one kill, hitting two kill. And now he's getting blown up by Mr. King Magnum uh, Doing a lot of damage. But that means that three people are dead from both sides with Ulysia on rails for spawning in a couple of seconds. And he is looking to poke a little bit more. Looking to do a little bit more damage. At least the inhib seems to be going down as he tries to poke but hits a minion. The other middle low health. Might as well execute himself maybe. Here, we see Elisa. <laughs> Going forward with the tone and using the Spirit Refuge, but it is not enough to hit uh, Beelzebin and Beelzebin and Vintigas just walk away cleanly after they took the inhibitor. Uh huh. Really chaotic game indeed. Yeah, if if, if Red Team Holhopsky can pull their, you know, all in off, then we, we can see that Santa's real gangsters can't really answer that as their team isn't really good at. Um, you know, dealing with all ends, but um, it also depends on Shan and Raul making sure that they can peel off of the peel Shan and uh, Jace and Ash. Uh, it's really important that they can protect their carries, which might have to stick out to be able to deal poke damage. And if Vladimir and Jinx can hold on to those, then it's really dangerous. Yeah, it's tight. Oh, here we go again. Vladimir, yelling the snowball, getting the Hemoplake. Also, Beelzebub been going in with the Grand Enter, using the charm on every single person he could find. But only Jace is now alive. But that does mean that a lot of damage is going to be dealt from the side of Holmes. Okay, fighting four kills so far. Jace in a victory for pick one. It's a clean ace. Mm -hmm. All five members still alive in favor of Holmes. Okay, and they might be looking for an ending play here. Beelzebub been tanking up the tower. Still keep you going for it. Together with the Mortis, they have with two AD carries. In fact, the two strongest tower damaging AD carries. A lot of damage on the towers. Here, Kukup you by getting executed. And as they take down a single Nexus tower, clean play, but it's not enough to end the game. Bayamazman looking for the this uh, the execute, but it's yeah, it's just gonna be a, a Gale King over to Cubicle. But he does get to reset, he does get to refill his mana, he does get to refill his hit points. So let's have a look how impact that fallout is going to be. As he needs to respawn for 20 more seconds. Yes, well, 22 seconds isn't a lot considering that. Oh, here we go, the Ash ult. The, the blue team has arrow. to push the wave as well. Yikes, uh -huh. it's not a arrow landing on Breaking Bar. Breaking Bar directly going down. Now they continue to engage from Cubicle, finding the kill onto uh, Demortius as well as Vinterjas. And that is, uh, well, almost an, an ace now in the favor of. Uh, Santa's little gangster. So now what uh, Ho Hopsky needs to do is stabilize. They need to prevent uh, like this escalation here and they need to stay alive with all five of them to come back alive. So it's going to be a rough task but they need to do it anyway. It's As really really Cubicle. really tight. Yeah very tight indeed. We see Beyonzman going in using the grand entrance using his ultimate charming of four people together with the human play from Kukibi. That's massive and but it's not enough. 
He'll keep you going down. Another massive knockup in favor of Beelzebub. Also Beelzebub going down. Now it'll be a Demortius as well as Vintiaz and Breaking Bart. Looking for the clear. Finding one, finding two, but also going down. There's actually two only down on the side of um, uh, Sets Little Gangsters. But um, three now again on the side of Ho Obsuke. Ho Obsuke seeming to stabilize a little bit as they buy themselves some time for people to respawn. But they're still poke alive on the side of Santa's Little Gangsters. It's a beautiful game of arm. <laughs> it, it is the ideal thing Ooh. you want to watch. It's the King oh. Mark Noain going down due to poke from Vintiaz. In fact, it looks like the Anilsa is also going to go down together with Obi. Probably looking for a reset as they think they have enough time to respawn before oh, oops, okay, can make their way back to the Nexus. But there's only one Nexus tower alive, so be careful oh. what you wish for. Oh. This is difficult because. Well, the red team, the whole stay is going to reach before they respawn. They need to hold on, just like the other teammates of Hobbs, Hobbske, what R Rakan and Vladimir did, they have to do now. The blue team, going to be a difficult task, as you said. Yes, definitely. Now, the thing is, Tristana waited in base for a long time to get the QSS. That means that, that the whole Obstake is only pushing with four members. Now, all five members from Santa's Little Gangsters are back alive. Uh -huh. So this is probably only going to be an inhibitor before they cleanly disengage, waiting for the Tristana to catch back up. In fact, Demotius is right here, cubicle, engaging, almost losing his life for it, um, but he has a bunch of lifesteal built with the uh, Bloodthirster, so he should be fine for now. Um, yeah, so it's a 5v5, fair 5v5, both teams have about full health available. Um, let's see how this ends. Can Mr. King Mark and Obi land enough damage before the fight starts? No, because here they're ready to go. QKP landing in Hippoplex, but immediately getting executed. Cubicle looking to stay alive together with the Shen Ult, but it's not enough. Meaning that it's a one for one so far. But the other thing going in, being very tanky, but it is going down. And oh, only the Morty is sitting left. Everybody explodes from the side of the whole Ops okay? And Mr. King Mark and doing work, finding the double kill, finding the ace for Santa's little gangsters. And now they're looking to push down the last Nexus Tower. 35 to 38 kills, my lord, what a clown fiesta. I used it word before, ah. I use it again. Ah, Jace, that's the word I want to use. <laughs> it's just Jace, I mean, man. Yeah, it's and now, Ulysia and Anilsa are very tanky, meaning that they don't need minions to kick this uh, tower down, and there we see it going down. Now, Obi and Mr. King Mark Noe are focusing on that, and that is going down very low, and in fact, it's going down all the uh, way to uh, zero. Oh, oh hopes the game being knocked out of the tournament by Santa's little gangsters managing to go to the losers finals. So yeah, that's uh, that's it for uh, for those games. That was great. That was beautiful. Just mighty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What ultimately uh, made the the winning push available for um, for Santa's little gangsters? Do you think there? I mean. Uh, Jace, uh, just it's just Jace. I mean, I'm sure the other members are doing a lot of stuff as well, but Jace, I mean, can we see how much damage he did? Uh, let's have a look how much damage he did. He did a bunch of damage, oh. surprisingly, actually, that bunch more damage. Yeah, you can't see it currently on stream, but um, yeah, definitely a lot of work done by um, by Jace and by Ash. Uh, so yeah, definitely yeah. last fight. We saw that work out. Now, before we go into our next match, um, I'm going to share with you what the prize is going to be of this epic tournament. Because, you know, you can never have an epic tournament without an epic prize. Um, and in fact, let me transition to it. We have a Christmas Poro bag. In fact, the winning team, all five members, will get a Christmas Poro bag delivered to them. Now, they are still on their way to Delft. They are still being delivered to us right now. So they're going to get them somewhere halfway January. But this is definitely the thing that they will be winning. We don't know who is going to be winning this, but they will be winning this one. So, um, yeah, it's definitely huge stakes that, uh, um, uh, huge stakes that they are fighting for. Uh, by getting the complaint from Pinda that I'm not in his friends list anymore, so I'm sending in a uh, friend request to him. Anyway, um, <laughs> yes, so... Uh, Anyway, so, um, we're going into the next game. In fact, this game is going to be the game uh, between the Santa's Little Gangsters 
and the loser of the previous match. So let me quickly have a peek at that. That's going to be uh, the snail snivers um, bracket. So let's bring them actually up so you can see it as well. The side of knights managing to find the second win and placing themselves in the finals. On the other hand, the snail snivers being taken down by the side of knights now having to face Santa's little gangs before they can go for the re-engage uh, on the side of knights. Or it will be the Santa's little gangs. We'll definitely have a look. So, uh, cast is ready. The match can start and it looks like it is no not yet okay well um we'll see that everybody all the teams are going to be ready so we're definitely going to go into team real quick uh let me quickly aha uh -huh. yeah so i'm quickly gonna adjust the overlay so uh, take it away oh I mean, huh. so both teams are inter have interesting picks for ARAM. Well, when we see Nidalee, Yorick, um, Kalista, maybe not necessarily things you want for ARAM, but still, if you can play them, they're still, you know, powerful, I think. Um, other, other than that, Makai Ultimate can be interesting to see. Sejuani can change CC people. Um, it really, it, like, uh, enthusiastic to see what Driven is going to do, uh, provided I believe that she can deal the most damage in her team. It's a lot of AoE damage and her ultimate as well. Other than that, I don't think any, you know, team has, like, specifically powerful picks. Nothing like uh, Malphite or Katarina or the things we mentioned. So in that, I, in that, um, I feel like the teams are fair. Oh, Yurik. That's the champion I only see when I play it. <laughs> really, really enticed to see what's going to happen. Yurik is a very powerful champion once you're dealing with 1v1s or 1v2s, but he's not necessarily very powerful in team fights. So really, you know, looking forward to see how Obi is going to make him work. He did do a little, little, little uh, build with Ash, which worked tremendously good. Apparently, he he did the most damage, and maybe he can come up with something like that in, with York as well. Really interested in seeing doing, doing what he's going to see. Oh, really interested in seeing what he's going to do. Yes, a lot of mix up with the words there. Yeah, definitely. Also, and I'm looking at those teams, right? You see a lot of champions and a lot of beefy boys. And the one thing, actually two letters that I can think of is going to be CC. We see, um, for C -C. example, Cubicle on the Sejuani. We see Obi on the Yomari Ranger, the Yorick. We see Anilsa with the Charm on Ari. We see Mr. King Mark no Aim on Thrash landing CC after CC. On the other side, Jax CC, Maokai CC, Riven CC, Alt on... Um, Nautilus, CC, so a lot of CC coming from both sides, and I'm expecting to see fights go on for a little bit longer than we have, are used to now in the previous two games. Yes, you really can't afford being caught off guard in this time, because, well, one mispositioning and then you change CC to death. Essentially, Yorick can put, him, put you in his cage, then Sejuani can easily like a hit an ult onto you, Ahri can charm you, Trash can hook you. The, the same can be said for the other team as well. Nautilus is, I believe, the champion who has the most CC in his kit. And uh, you also have Maokai, well, essentially an ultimate. Oh, and I'm um, really interested in seeing what the other team is going to do with Maokai ultimate, by the way, because you can dodge Maokai's ultimate if one person is the bait and the others are behind them. So... Definitely. I want to see that as well. Otherwise, as well, all of you are going to get rooted, which is not something you want to see. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Now we see Aiden Deck in the chat saying, this is rigged and Nilsa shouldn't be allowed to get Ari. Um, yeah, she did get <laughs> Ari. She is uh, very much an Ari lover in, uh, in Summoner's Rift normally. So, um, you know, maybe Nilsa is going to get a lot of work on this Ari, or maybe she will just get curb stomped uh, because of the amount of CC. We'll have to have to see how this is going to go. 
Um, now, we are actually done with the spectator delay. We are loading into game. So soon you will be able to see how Santa's little gangsters match up against new snipers. Again, Santa's little gangsters just won last game using a lot of poke. Sneeuw Stivers, although we didn't get to see the match, just lost the previous game. So the mantle might already be in advantage of Santa's little gangsters. So we're gonna have to see if they can pull through with the momentum that they already got. Okay, now we can see the summoner spells as well as the runes from here. Do you have anything that you think is going to be wonky yes. or normal? I don't see much weirdness. Maybe nine taps with the press the attack on Jax. What are your thoughts about that? Press the attack on Jax. Huh. Very interesting because you usually want that when you do a lot of 1v1. I feel like Conquer might have been a bit better. Uh, so interesting pick, but uh, I, I don't really. Well, depends on how you want to work with that, I believe. Maybe he just wants want to burst one per person. That could work as well. Um, I feel uh, another thing I want to mention is Anilsa is oh, if you have ever seen her play or if you have ever seen anything about her, there are a lot of angry things with Anilsa. And I believe even though our ARAM isn't well or isn't truly really good in ARAM, I feel Anilsa will do Anilsa can do good. We see Pinda did good things with Lucian even though he is not a good fit for ARAM. And comfortable picks can make sure that you shine in the game. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So we're going to have a look at uh, how this game commences as both teams just left their base um, with a bunch of items. We see uh, actually six guardian horns from either side as Jax gets hooked and charmed and he flashes away with his life but he only has about 50 hit points left. Not a great start for uh, steps to, uh, to begin with as the Nidley spears start flying in. Nidley, another Jace-like champion, poking, poking, poking. Poking. But she's not as effective as Jace is going to be because her Q is unfortunately not AoE. Ah, another interesting thing is I see York has picked Grasp. Okay, I'm dying. Ooh, the second hook lands. Maokai uh -huh. getting hooked in there, losing about half his hit points, but he's not going to go down. Uh -huh. Well, it's really interesting to see that all Jaces are trying to suicide at some point, but that's, I guess, what you do with Jace when you're in ARM. At least that's what I used to do if I got a J uh, Jax. Aha. Uh -huh. I see the blue team is really good with making sure the skill shots are landing. Yeah, a very important, of course, landing the uh, skill shots, the hooks, the snowballs, the charms, um, hell, even the uh, glacial prisons from... Uh, Cubicle, those are all neat to land. And there you saw your skill shot as the mm -hmm. first blood goes uh -huh. in favor of Anilsa onto steps. Um, yeah, Jax was already low, so it was expected for him to go down. Gets flayed once more and immediately gets taken down. Ari one up. Yes, Ari. Oh, you. Well, if Ari gets fed, then you can make sure that one person of the enemy team is dead for sure whoever gets the charm is dead if Ari is fed so you really make like you need to pay attention to that yeah definitely so um yeah of course one thing important thing to note is a champion can never be fed until they have died once oh never mind here we go the hook lands on the uh -huh. with guilty seagull but immediately the response is there uh alt also managing to land the dredge line onto uh, I don't even know. I don't even remember who it was. And a lot of haywire stuff going in uh, on in the meanwhile, but nobody going down until Mr. King Mark Nine landing another hook, and then immediately responding with another dredge <laughs> line, and Mr. King Mark Nine going down. Obi now low, flashing forward, managing to land the Q, slapping him with the shovel, but the tree is not going down. Cubicle now low, as Mr. King Mark Nine and Ulysia are already dead. This means that also Cubicle going down, Pinda with the Callista doing work. Huh. The tanks are doing their job. They tank a lot. Maokai got hooked like three times already, but he isn't dead. And he isn't going to be dead. Well, yet, even they don't have any items yet, I feel like they did a lot of, you know, important stuff there. They made sure the old damages went to Maokai and Nautilus. And that's why I feel like the blue team didn't really do well in the last team fight. 
I definitely think here. here we see the ultimate from Kalista trying to yeet Ultra uh, uh, Ultimus uh -huh. in there, as well as the flash forward from Ayas, managing to find a bit of stun. Uh, but the counter engages here because the tower still does a lot of work. Ayas now getting hooked up, and that is three kills in favor of. Uh, oh, I see that I have the team names cor uh, incorrectly again, so I'll correct them. Correct them but anyway, three kills in favor of Santa's little gangsters against the Sneeuw Snipers. Mm. Yeah, so I feel like that was a bit too greedy. Like, even though you're six doubles, you definitely don't want to, you know, um, tower dive five people who are also full health. Yeah, and now we see the same happen oh, on the other side. Uh, the engage from uh, same Sentinel and Gangers onto the low members of um, uh, uh, Snow Stivers, but it does not pay off for them either. Mr. Kingmark no ain't going down without any casual casualties on the side of the Snow Stivers. Huh. Yes, the exact same thing happened. Unfortunately for the um, Santa's gangsters, they didn't have as much casualties as the snipers had. But yeah, yeah, interesting that Kalista has gone for three Rager beads. They they do help with Aram, but that's not what he expected. Kalista, maybe it will work out. But be really interesting to see. Definitely, definitely. So. What is up next? We see that both teams are waiting for the wave to crash into the red side tower. Spears being mm -hmm. thrown what? one by one, looking for the targets. But as you already mentioned, those spears are a lot hard to thread. Oh, Mr. King Markman landing the mm -hmm. um, death sentence, but it's not in fact a death sentence as Jax just walks away whistlingly, not even close. <laughs> It is still uh -huh. raining. Well, if you have ghouls, by the way, yes, yes, definitely. But also, something that I don't think about while seeing Yorick, if you can hit Yorick's E and you have ghouls, that's also a lot of poke damage. They, the ghouls really deal, do deal some damage. And you'll see throughout the game that the Yorick is making sure that these are hitting. And once they hit, the little ghouls are chasing you. And then, well, they do deal some poke damage. See. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So uh, Yorick also can help with the poke uh, thing as the charm lands uh, onto uh, Alt, but Alt gets immediately uh, ulted by Kalista. Now we see the counter engage with um, Nine Taps and Ayos going in as uh, Alt already falls and trades for Ulysia. Now the second hook, Mr. Markinu A lands onto Ayos. I can explain it under the tower, but he managed to turn it around. Cubicle going in, landing his ultimate and going back out with the flash. Actually, nets him a kill on two steps. But is it enough to protect the tower? Four people alive with all on relatively low health bars. Flash forward for Mr. King Mark no aim. Managing to head a massive box uh -huh. onto the entire backline. And now Pinda looking to kind it out as Guilty Seagull is gonna fall. Mr. King Mark no aim misses the hook, misses Pinda as Pinda is not yet very, very strong as Kalista, but he's kiting, he's kiting and he's not going to go do enough damage. I have also getting taken out and zero casualties on the side of um, so just little ga uh, gangsters. Oh, another thrash hook oh, lands. Mr. King Mark really, Man really making fight. it count, but like Jack says Ooh. thank you very much. Lands a four man counter strike, but it is not enough to net anything. <laughs> Alt now on his own, looking to defend the tower, but the tower is already going down, getting played back. It means that he's going to be in trouble. Alt getting stunned up, but yeah, he is still an office. Sure. He can still do a lot of work, and he's tanky, but he goes down in the end. Guilty Seagull now looks to help Alt, but he's on his own. Played out of the little box from uh, uh, Yorick, and he is very tanky as well. Going down ultimately in the long run because Obi is dealing a lot of damage. <laughs> Ayaz, is it going to be enough to take down the Yorick? Yes, because he definitely did just want to die right there. Ulysia also decided that dying here is the correct thing. Yep. Now Pinda coming back in, having bought some items, having built a QSS, he's looking to do work. Mm -hmm. Yes, you see there. Yorick's sustain is also coming into game. Well, really interesting to see that there are three people in Santa's gangster who all the time have 300 health or below, but still like went on to do the, the fights and they, I feel like they did a good job there. Now, another thing that we mentioned was Anilsa is playing her comfort pick and I feel like that's paying off. That's 416 Ari and then well, we'll see her affect the game. As you have Ludens and the source of boots, and if you hit, if you got hit by a charm, the worst thing that can happen is that you lose half your health, and that's like the best thing that can happen. The worst thing 
of course, being that you die very quickly. Definitely. Now, we see scale shots being tossed around left and right. Pinda getting hooked up into a little box as the guilty seagull decides that is a good time to engage. But he takes a lot of damage for it and he actually goes down. Now, Kyubuko looking to play distortion as nine, or nine taps or steps going forward. Getting flayed backwards and Ayos and steps are in a very, very rough spot. Not able to do enough work. Now it's all up to Alt and Pinda. As Alt gets flayed and charmed and, and, and everything. And he is just dead. Pinda also <laughs> not managing to make it to the heal. Um, and therefore he goes down a clean ace in favor of Santa's Little Gamers. The CC from Mr. King Mark Noen and Cubicle working out in their favor. Yeah. Really spicy gameplay there as well. I feel like the red team just doesn't have the damage to kill blue team. Blue team has two tanks and a lot of sustain as well. Oh, here we go, oh. the hook landing, but Jack's also going in, landing a massive counter strike, but is it enough to turn around and fight around? No, because Gilda Seagull is already gonna fall. Now nine steps, a uh, steps, is looking to take a lot of damage, going down here, pin down, hitting auto attack after auto attack, but is it going to be enough? Gonna fruit for the rent, actually takes a second kill of the fight for him. Now, Obi is still a very strong player and very rough to deal with for any carries. Pin down with the instant cleanse, managing to take down for the quadra kill. And now, actually, there we go! The first Penta of this uh, stream. Penta kill? Pinta, Pinta picking up kill. all five uh, um, uh, kills on the side of uh, uh, Sneeuw Snivers. Very, very impressive team fighting there. Um, yeah, so maybe this will be a turning point. Pinda managing to get a lot of work done. That was incredible. Like we said, the kill stays isn't necessarily a very good pick for ARAM, but Pinda, just like the previous game, is making sure that it's working, working, and working very, very good. Yeah, definitely. We see him going uh, 10 whoa. and 2 already as his um, work completed, so that's definitely a power spike in favor of uh, Kalista, uh, using that to mm -hmm. the fullest. As we see the team going back in, the Guilty Seagull again looking for a twisted advance onto uh, Cubicle, but it is not paying off, taking a lot of damage, having to back off. Now, Cubicle uh, managing managing to hit the Glacial Prison onto Pinda, but Pinda is going to look for disengage, and Nilsana also looking for Pinda. In fact, the entire team is gunning for him, but Pinda is still alive, and he is still doing damage. And he picks up all together with Alt, and I also still alive. Another <laughs> kill, and damn, he's doing work. Um, they engage, well, looks very strong, but it's not enough for now. Yeah. But then the snowball hits, oh. and that's definitely directly the end for Pinda. Now, Ayas, with the Gore Drinker, restoring a lot of health. Not getting hooked because he's out of range, but it doesn't matter. Because he just gets slapped with a shovel on his head, and he is dead. Only alt alive, as actually Guilty Seagull and uh, Steps have respawned. Now, Guilty Seagull, landing the snowball, going back in, immediately going back out, and... Trying to CC the enemy as much as possible, preventing the towers from going down. But uh, the blah, blah, blah. Santa's uh, uh, little gangsters are not looking to slow down. One tower is going down and traded for Obi. Mm -hmm. Now Mr. King Mark Noen is on his own. Uh, the last tower for uh, Sneeuw Snivers actually manages to survive as Anilsa is waiting for them in the middle of the bridge. Okay. Nice. Ah. Uh. Isn't Gore Drinker a beautiful item? <laughs> Don't you think that's the case? Yeah, Steps... I and mean, as a top lane main. Definitely. Steps looking like he was going to go down, but using the Gore Drinker, restoring about 70% of his max hit points, and then uh, not dying. Oh, Ooh, that was a good clean. pickup from Anilsa. Um, showing her prowess on the Ari as she goes back in, managing to land another charm to get to see. Let's see, now tanking the tower, looking to disengage. Steps, gonna get... Stunned, and he actually goes very, very low and even goes down. Pindan are looking at the full retreat, but he gets snowballed by Obi, by Yorick, and Yubiko flashing forward, looking for the damage onto Pinda. Pinda still out of range, and he's gonna do spear after spear, but if one thing Kalista has trouble with, it is tanks, and there's a lot of them on the side of uh, Santa's little mm. gamer. So even though Pinda is doing a lot of work, managing to stay out of the grasp of the, of the CC, he is still not managing to have enough impact on this fight. If you see the uh, Hook from out, landing, immediately gets Fate Skull back out. Now, no, uh, okay, if we engage, it looks like from Pinda under his own tower, making use of the extra damage provided by tower. Mr. Kimarko is missing the hook, meaning that Pinda can take, uh, cleanly take him out. And that is basically it for this team fight. Never mind, because Pinda lands a snowball and is very, very likely to go down here after he kind of ints. But that's okay, because Steps here, oh. doing damage <laughs> onto the back line. 
of uh, uh, Santos Little Gamers. In fact, he just keeps going because uh, only Ulysia is uh, uh, still available there. But now, the inhibitor respawned and Obi and Cubicle are right there looking to take it down while they are being barraged by Ayas and Guilty Seagull. But Guilty Seagull, out of mana, out of hell, and not able to do very much. And Ayas decided that Made of the Mist is more strong or more a likely target to be threatening. Now, the re-engage Cubicle looking for the charge onto Ayas. Ayas, in fact, is not able to stop him from taking down the Nexus Tower. Just Obi is focusing down the Nexus itself, trading <laughs> his life but for a bit of help on that Nexus. Now, Cubicle. Hitting the ultimate onto Pinna. Pinna decides to not kill his asset, which is probably correct. In fact, he didn't have it available. And now the uh, people from Sentinel Gamers are just looking for the reset. You think, hmm, that was a weird engage, a weird int, but that's actually just so they can reset because they know they have enough time to respawn, <laughs> get more items, and come back onto the map even stronger than they were already. Hopefully, because of the red team is pushing, but they're probably be in the reach. I love how Obi is working york too like we said york is a very good 1v1 champion but not necessarily in team fights which is well one of the reasons that he's not played that much but there will be i feel like this making sure that it's working pretty good yeah uh, another thing i don't feel like blue team is showing much effort to dodge maokai ultimate i feel like every single thing inside ultimate oh or... the flash forward mr mark anyway managing to land the flame and to cleanse away and walk away from pinda now pinda in trouble Getting because down. there's a lot of people looking for him but he managed Ooh. to stay alive managed to stay out of fire Ooh. a lot of stuff is going Ooh. on in the mid lane in fact the ribbon is in there and and everybody's in there because i can't yeah. I just can't nice. see what's going on but i'm just going to keep my eye on pinda because pinda is the one that matters oh getting fate skull right back in there and Pinda is still alive, but now it's Obi. Obi looking to ignore the fight and just go for the back door. And Ayas is trying to stick with him. But here we see, see, you see, you're getting hooked under the tower. Um, oh boy, he's just so healthy still. Obi does not care. He just wants to end this game. Nine taps or steps being stopped by uh, Cubicle. And now you see Obi is going to get, take notice of the fact that he's being chased down. And he's still very <laughs> tanky, doing a lot of work. And my lord, Pinda actually almost in trouble. He gets shot. He gets facial prison. He gets shut down. Very well played. But now, the question is, do they have enough damage and sustain to keep this going? Mr. King Marshall 1, managing to land another play. Ah, is going very low, but he's still river. Never mind, he goes down. Uh, Alt, looking to get poke damage onto Nilsa. And Nilsa managing to stay alive. Even after the CC, now it's all up to Guilty Seagull. Two seconds for, uh, for steps. But he needs to hold off three members. And the game freezes, that is usually a sign that the game actually just ended. Just the fact that, that you know, things don't properly record for League. I'm quickly gonna have a look if I can hit play. No, it's... Okay, well, we have to assume that the game ended here. Um, my apologies, this is something that happens more often. Uh, it's a bug. Uh, I cannot fix that now. So, um, yeah, it looks like um, Santa's Little Gamers making it all the way to the finals, um, beating Snail Snipers uh, in the Losers finals. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have a look in a second at the finals. Wait, did it just. It's still. The game is still going? Hang on, let me just reconnect. Let me see. But um, it looks like um, this was the case. The game is not indicated yet as finished. So. I'm going to try and reconnect. Maybe it wasn't the finish yet. Um, so give me a few seconds. But for now, we're going to assume that uh, Snail Sniper was knocked out here by Santa's Little Gamers. Santa's Little Gamers then making it all the way to the finals. No, the game is in fact still going. My lord. Um, uh -huh. Oh, wait. Going oh, it's just right last seconds. In. Oh, no, wait. It's the same point in time. I'm not sure why we are seeing the same point in time again. Maybe we'll get to see the end this time. Nine uh, steps here. It's managing to stun up Mr. King Mark 9, but it's not enough. Here we've seen... In the meanwhile, Cubicle bashing away together with Ulysia, oh, looking for yes. the end of the Nexus, and there we see this time the Nexus actually going down, so we were right, the game just crashed, and we didn't get to see it. This time, we do get to see the final push, um, and this results in another game crash, but hey, at least we got to see the Nexus explode, so um, yeah, definitely uh, a little bugged, but um, yeah, we're waiting to get the invite for the next game. Now, we already mentioned it a few seconds back, or a few seconds, like before the previous game, but we have some fabulous prizes. You as you can see here, the Christmas Poro bag. Wow, such prize. Ha. Okay, yeah, such that's uh, what we are playing for. So, the last game that is going on should be um, going on soon. We're going to start soon, so definitely stay around. In fact, I'm getting invited by the one and only Slacer20, the one that played Shivana in the very first game we saw, and he just slaughtered people so what is gonna happen do you think is, is uh, slacer 20 gonna pick another op champion and gonna slaughter everybody again or is 
uh, Santa's Little Gamers, who have been looking very, very good in the previous two games, going to take it home. Oh, well, once again, depends on the champions again. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, well, it, well, it depends on, once again, the champions. But uh, the I, an, an interesting thing I feel like you're seeing is comfort picks are as much valuable as the OP champions of ARAM. We see and also doing lots of work with um, Ari. We see Pinda doing lots of work with Kalista, even though those two champions are necessarily very strong in ARAM. So any team that gets a good combination of good champions in ARAM and comfortable picks, uh, I feel like they will have an advantage. Oh yeah, once again, in an old random, old mid-game, the champions that you get are indeed very important. Yeah. And we'll be going to the game once we're ready. Yeah, yeah, they are making the last lobby right now. Uh, the lobby is in fact called Last Christmas. Not only a very famous song by <laughs> Wham, but also the last match of this Christmas tournament to determine who takes away the bag in the bag. Ha. Anyway, who gets the, the bag, bag in the bag? <laughs> yes, so now it looks like we might... Jokes. Indeed, jokes. We might be swapping sides, but I'll let them figure it out. Um, in the meanwhile, I'll be setting up the in-game stuff correctly ahead of time. Big brain. Um, it's last Christmas, but it's spelled wrong. Yes, Thanks. indeed. Um, as we are waiting for the teams to get ready. Um, well, um, yeah, but what, like, we have seen a couple of games now. We've seen uh, a couple of wins, team win, teams win right now. So my question to you is, what do you think is the um, like the thing that has been working best? Uh, what, why have the teams that have won, won? Is there a specific reason for that? Or is it like a combination of all stuff that has been going on in those specific games? Well, I believe there is just a combination. Uh, the champions are important, like you mentioned. The comfortable picks are important. The ARM special OP champions are important. But sometimes... I mean, one of the important things is obviously you have to play, play clean. Uh, you have to make sure that the champions are working. But like, um, we see if you play ARAM or if you play ARAM at some point, people get champions that they just happen to own and they don't know how to play them and they just suicide into oblivion, <laughs> right? Uh, that's definitely not something that you want to see. Even if you get an OP ARAM champion, if you don't know how it works, then you're pretty much dead all the time. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, make sure that you're a good champion, make sure that, you, well, you can't really make sure that you get the good champion, but you make sure that you can play as good as possible. So definitely, like, a, it's a combination of skill and luck and, oh, your champion pool, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, very much. I think uh, one of the biggest things that we have seen so far is uh, the poke champions, but in that also the comfort champions. We saw Pinda and Kalista managing to do a lot of work. In fact, getting the penta kill mm -hmm. even uh, uh, in one of those um, one of those matches. So you know, heck, even if you have a worse team, you can still definitely make it work. But yeah, poke champions have been very important, um, like like enablers. If I well, with that, I mean like engage tanks. Uh, think of the Sejuani that we saw on the previous team uh, have have has been very effective at um, mm -hmm. enabling a team. Well, that's why they're called enablers, of course. So um, yeah, I'm I'm actually curious as to uh, what champions we're going to get, as I'm hoping the teams are ready soon enough. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, it looks like they are ready. Or I'm just stupid. Either way is fine. Um, no, they're still mingled. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can continue talking until they're ready, I guess. Yeah, uh, I guess we'll keep talking. Well, uh, teams are still um, making sure that they're all in the correct teams. Because currently we see uh, a couple of people coming from the wrong team to the wrong team. We see only... Actually, it looks like it's correct right now. Yeah, never mind, we're ready. And in fact, I have to change everything again because they decided to swap sides. But that's fine. Uh, no problem. Uh, there. That one needs to be turned on. And that one needs to be turned on. There we go. Now. 
There we go. Okay, that should fix it all. Um, yeah, so there should be a relatively short notice for the next gem select. So uh, bear with us for a sec. Um, yeah, uh, SLG. So once more, this is uh, the finals of, oh, they have two toilet people. Okay, sure. Uh, we are waiting for two <laughs> people to finish the, their toilet runs real quick. So we have a couple mere minutes to go. So the point I was gonna make is this is the finals of the DCA League of Legends Christmas special. Um, the snowball ARAM tournament that, have been, that we have been watching so far. In the first round, we saw uh, decided Knight beat Ho Ho Hopsuke. Um, and Sneeuw Snivers later in a very like brief glimpse we saw Sneeuw Snivers beat Santa's Little Gangsters. Subsequently, subsequently we saw Ho Hopsuke getting knocked out by Santa's Little Gangsters um, in a uh, uh, in the, the second match we watched. And meanwhile, we're watching that the Silent Knights managed to make it to the finals because they beat Sneeuw Snivers. Now, the previous round we saw Sneeuw Snivers lose to Santa's Little Gangsters, and that's how we got here: the Silent Knights versus Santa's Little Gangsters. As Gem Select is ready. I will actually make sure that you can see it as well. Gems like ready. Um, yeah, here we go. These are the champions Ooh. that we're going to play our finals with. It's going to be best of one. So we only have a single chance to make it count. So we see Twitch, Garen, Oriana, Yasuo, and Misfortune versus um, Volibear, Kane, Rek'Sai, Rumble, and Hecarim. What are your yes. thoughts? really really nice on both teams maybe um um the um these uh, the silent knights maybe had maybe slightly better um but uh though the oriana ultimate coupled with garen queuing into the whole theme can be something really something that we want to see twitch ultimate is going to be hurting the other team once he is fed or once he you know once you see the late game we always have misfortune ultimate. That's always something that works. Yes. Yeah. So ultimate is there. That's also Oriana ultimate with Yas ultimate is a good combination. Garen can just straight go into the other team with a snowball, and then we can see a rumble combo there. Uh, the other team is also looking good with rumble ultimate and Hecarim ultimate. Everybody will be feared if the Hecarim can make sure that he hits us all to everybody. Um, Rumble ultimate, if you're, you know, if you're, if you're raiding inside your own turret because your health is low, then Rumble is going to execute you with your ultimate, which can be very useful. Um, I don't know if you've seen any canes lately, but Red Kane isn't dying. Like, he's immortal, invincible. If, if he can get a good um, Gore Drinker, if he can hit his Gore Drinker to as, much, as many people as possible, he's full health again. And then he can cast his ultimate again. He has full health again, and then he has his life steal as well, which is beyond me. It's yeah. really freaking very good. Um, the Rex side is a bit unfortunate, I believe. Uh, very early game, and well, he can maybe execute the very low champions. He can jump into them. That's actually useful. But we'll see his effect on the game. Actually, I believe Rex is a she. Is it queen Indeed, of yeah. some void creature, so she is more appropriate. Uh, but we'll see her impact on the game wane as the game goes on, because we'll precise bits of an early game jungler. Uh, Volibear, if you want a tower dive, that's actually a nice combo. You will tower dive with Volibear and then hit with Rumble Ultimate. And that's very good. If you have low health, then you can't really resist that. Yeah, really... Yeah interesting combos on both sides but i feel like the red team's composition is a bit slightly more harder slightly harder to pull off yeah what i think but if they can that's devastating yeah yeah what i think is that the scaling in, is really in favor of the side of knights uh twitch yasuo or yana mm -hmm. is definitely because everybody's going to be taking snow anyway it's going to be maybe you know that easy to, to get the the combos that you already mentioned with the snowball or yana ult yasuo ult, that might be uh, very very available on the other side however we see the the um, the very strong like boys team like but of course Rexai is a girl but like you get what I mean like 
big chunky boys and then Rek'Sai looking to go in um, looking to fight, uh-huh. looking to start fights and, and just <laughs> be obnoxious fight for a long time, win over like over a long period of time and the way they make that work is just by, by finding the back line or like basically and everybody except for Quinton 555 on the side of Santa's, uh, the side of Knights, excuse me, and then just blowing them up um, well, slowly blowing them up basically, as they are very chunky mm-hmm. and not dying themselves. Uh, you already mentioned the cane with like the seven different ways of restoring his health bar to max um, mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, Anilsa maybe with the, the Rek'Sai looking for a Prouder's Claw, uh, a trick you mm-hmm. can use with, with Rek'Sai is to guarantee a knock-up, in fact, is with the Prouder's Claw. So um, who knows? We'll see what sticks best. Uh, all we know is that those two teams that have proven to be the best A-Ram teams so far in this tournament, and they're going up head-to-head against each other to see who is truly the victor of the Deisha League of Legends Winter Special Tournament, the ARAM Snowball Extravaganza. So, let's have a look as we're loading into Champ Select, loading, excuse me, loading into the game, in fact, um, at the Summoner Spells and Runes and Masteries. Is there anything that hmm. stands out? Yeah. Rek'Sai is, has Guardian. That's very interesting to me, but I've... Hmm. So, what I, what I would love to see is Rek'Sai going for Twitch because like you said they are chunky boys and well Rek'Sai uh the chunky boys the unfortunate thing is for the, the blue side is that their damage might not be enough if twitch is dead because they're not dying very easy the hacker wall bear and uh kane has lots of sustained dolls and if Rek'Sai can make sure twitch is dead then their damage just might not be enough. The unfortunate thing is Rek'Sai has Guardian, and I feel like um, she might have a more less assassin build. But I'm also interested in seeing what they have in mind. Yeah, definitely, I feel like it's going to be an interesting match. Other than that, um, Oriana has um, Dark Harvest. Makes sense. Um, Miss Fortune has the Comet. Poking damage, cool fine as well. And then that, the other stuff, I feel like they are pretty standard. Yes, but, both um, teams have in the meanwhile left the base gates, so we're going to see what this level 1 or level 3, if you will, looks like. For now, it seems like people are tossing snowballs. In fact, Obi <laughs> going just for having quick this fun. dip in, dip out. Um, actually working, the Tiger losing a couple of, uh, couple of hit points there. <laughs> So, we see um, Gore Drinker galore on one side, and the other side is a bit more varied. Both Rek'Sai and um, Kane starting with um, the first item to build towards Gore Drinker, the Iron Spike Whip. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, the first push, because, no, no. Oh, that's something I haven't touched upon yet. Um, Red side has five melee champions, so it means that they're never going to have priority in lane uh-huh. unless they go for an engage. So that's something they need to play around. Not getting too poked out while they find their engages. Um, which can be rough, man. Yes, that's... There's... Yeah, it will be rough, but they'll be waiting for their first items because we'll have probably two Gorgian Quiz and a Stride Breaker, which I believe is a smart choice for Hikram as he wants to get into the backline. That makes sense. Um, Rek'Sai's Gore Drinker is interesting, but, well, if they think that Rek'Sai needs to survive, then that's a good choice. Other than that... Hmm, Twitch is going for um, those interesting Aram special items, which I learned to be are actually pretty powerful, even though they don't really build into an item. Yeah, they are the OP versions of Doran's items, indeed, for about 950 yes. gold instead of... The... Oh, here we go, the first engage, Obi, uh-huh. doing the same thing, dipping in, dipping in, <laughs> right out, but the, this time, uh, the Silent Knights are not letting it go that easily, putting a lot of damage back down, and in fact, Anilsa is already almost dead. But almost is not entirely, so who knows, we see the first tower damage now also coming out, about a quarter, ah, a fifth of the, of the tower has already been taken, and now it's approaching a quarter of the health. Oh boy. That's a snowball to fix it, who was already low, but not going in for it. Okay. Huh. So, Obi might be doing those things to stack his um, transformation. If that's the case, that's smart. Uh, another thing that occurred to me, but I don't think that will be the case, uh, Kane can be blue Kane to reach into the backline, which is really important for Red Side right now. 
but from the Conqueror and the Gore Drinker start, I feel like that's definitely going to be red game. Yeah, yeah. Something I hear a lot for about game is that blue game is always the more fun to play, but red game is always <laughs> the stronger to play uh, game. So if you like having fun, you go blue game. If you like winning, you go red game. <laughs> well, I do hear a lot of that for my friends. I can speak for my friends, and they feel like that's the case. Uh, well, as a top lane main, I always go red K. But, but I mean, I just don't play assassins. But yes, that's most true. Uh, but sometimes meta can shift into blue cane, and then you'll see that blue cane like for one second, and then you're facing gray, gray screen instantly. Yeah, definitely. Something I've abused myself now and then as well. <laughs> just deleting some fools left and right um, can be yes. fun. Uh, but again, uh, red cane just so consistent, so much healing, so it can work out very strong now let's have a look at where we're standing because nothing much has happened which is why we've been going on for such a long tangent um oh never mind because here we go Ooh. cubicle going in flash ultimate directly onto the back line and that fact that's two kills one in favor of each team now clinton going low that's an arena ultimate goes to flip and now the first fight happens oh the after are available the also also going in getting a kill but also going down that's actually a four for two in the net game oh. for the the side at Knights here. Obi, the only one that hasn't died from the side of uh, Santa's Little Gangsters. That looks like a very uh, rough fight for Santa's Little Gangsters. Yeah. Yes. Being a five melee team means that you're going as strong, but if you're leaving with the other team surviving, then, well, good luck to you. <laughs> Obi going in, looking for a fight. Pinto now going low. Also, the follow up for the Nilsa is there, but she's now disengaging because it is looking rough. Now, the trade is one for one as Clinton uses his Demacian Justice, the uh, Judgment, sorry, onto Obi, and he does definitely take him down. Um, yeah, now we see that everybody on the side of Sanzo Gangsters has died exactly once from the Obi, just looking for the reset there. That's why he went so aggressive. Um, has actually finished his Gore Drinker, that's very impactful. The same goes mm. for Baron and the Shield Bow for Yasuo. Yes, Immortal Shield Bow, very important for Yasuo and for Yone as well. That's well, essentially the mythic version of the old Phantom Dancer with the Omni Man. Um, that's only one for life still. I think Immortal. Yeah, let me check, check that out. It actually. Hang on, I didn't check it actually. It gives you. Oh, it's, it's not even only them or lifesteal. Core Drinker gives yes. you a uh, net health gain based on how many targets you hit. Ah, yes, the Core Drinker doesn't give you a uh, lifesteal, but um, Immortal Shield Bow apparently gives. Life steal and not Omni Man. That's what I was looking for. Ah, yes, yeah, the Gore Drinker. The Gore Drinker can sustain you only if you can hit um, your active to other people. So no, um, no life steal or no Omni Man. You have hit the uh, the active, which can be very surprising indeed. Ah, we see some cane action. Yeah, Kane looking for the snowball just to delay. indeed stack up his passive a little bit, but he takes a lot of damage. In fact, Mr. Um, Tys12 going in, dealing a bunch of damage and um, taking the kill. Now the same goes for Mr. Immortal and also going down after a good Orianna ult. He's being engaged, he did yourself. Using the unstoppable onslaught, but it's not enough to properly take herself out. Clinton going down, but three in favor of the, uh, the Silent Knights on the other side. Yes. Oh, the red side really needs their items to be able to survive. And well, otherwise they're just getting poked under their turret or in the lane. Oh, five melee champions, unfortunately. Yeah, we see the engage. Cubicle ulting forward together with Obi, actually managing to stick onto the backline. And the entire backline of the side is now going low. The Tiger managing to find a response skill, but ultimately only Garen, who just respawned, is the only one left alive. So, it's sort of ace in favor of um, uh, Santa's Little Gangsters. Yes, a really nice comeback. Well, the goal is now almost equal. And that's a nice, we're oh. still going to have a good game. Ah. <laughs> Judgment oh. onto Anilsa going down. Obi ignoring the Garen, just going <laughs> for the... Uh, Tower now fix it, joining him with the snowball, but he is a squishy misfortune. So Obi thinks I'll take that, but the tiger says mm. I think not. Um, 
That's three deaths on the side of Santa's little gangsters. Clinton with the flash looking for Anilsa, but Anilsa just walks away. Ah, well, since we're talking about Gorjenko, by the an interesting thing about Gorjenko is that the lower health you have, the more damage you have as well. It can increase up to 15% currently. And that's a lot of good things for people like Aatrox or Kane, where they would like to, you know, um, oh. play on the more dangerous side. Uh -huh, Aha, there's an engage. engage from Kane onto the entire team of Decided Knights, and the result is that a lot of people die. But also on the other side, in fact, <laughs> everybody died there. Great response from the Tiger as well as Slacer to get a lot of damage down. Uh, interesting factor as well there, fix it, getting engaged upon, immediately starts channeling his ult knowing he was going to die and figured I might as well get as much damage off right now. Um, so, um, uh, something that in the chat was said, 100% uh, win rate for blue side. Um, I actually <laughs> can confirm, uh, but uh, it is not necessarily blue side favorite, I can tell you that much. So, <laughs> An interesting nice. coincidence. Yeah. Definitely possible. Um, we only have a sample size of what, six matches? So um, nothing is guaranteed. Still, that's a really good. Well, what's the chance of that happening? Oh, we we'll see like, a red um... game. Indeed. Oh. Yes. Now, the chance of blue side winning every single match is 2.5 to the power of six if you have six matches. So that's still a very lucky. Well, lucky if you want to call that, for lack of a better term, but yeah, that's pretty low chance what happened. Frankly. It's very much possible that the better team is just on blue side a couple of times in a row. Yeah, definitely, you don't know. Um, our sample size is just not big enough. Now, I mentioned Red Kane. Red Kane is, uh, as we already mentioned, going for a sustain, not looking for those executes on the back line, looking for the longer sustained fights. This is also because the rest of, the, of his team wants to do the same. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, now it's looking a little bit like a stalemate but it's still going in the push ah my apologies the push is still going towards the base of Santa's little camera so Obi is trying to do something about it using his W using his ult fighting the backline fix it is already dead and now also Obi falls Mr. King Magno 8 falls Ulysia falls and in training for only fix it that means that it looks like it's almost really starting to look like a dumb game Quinton here going to execute himself Giving a kill over to Rek'Sai. Um, that means that they might not be able to end huh. here? Maybe they are. No, I felt we like if know. the Garen didn't die, Gato could have uh, ended the game. Delizia is going to look for the Tiger. Finds the kill. Slays <laughs> it 20 and Mr. Tais 12 are now looking to end the game. Tais going for some damage on the active but gets taken down because everybody from Santa's Little Gamers has respawned. Now, Slays it 20. Sort of semi tanky but not enough because he also goes <laughs> down. Triple kill for Ulysia. Um, cleaning up now, looking to counter push. Mm -hmm. now, at, at this point, I, they're trying to get into backline, but then at some point, they might not have enough damage. But yeah, they're at least trying to do that. Interesting choice for Hacker I'm going to for um, Divine Devourer. I was expecting a Stride Breaker. Interesting that there aren't, well, the the other team is actually very squishy, so I don't really see the point of the line devour, but fine, I guess. But well, <laughs> that still grants you some survivability. Okay, in the meanwhile, we see that both teams have fully respawned. Obi looking for a flank, and actually finds a flank, but he bites off maybe more than he can shoot, but he's still alive. He's healing a bunch of health, and meanwhile, Ulysia gets shut down by Yasuo, but we see a massive misfortune, doing a lot of damage, now Kubo is alive, but he's the only one, and in fact, he dies. So much action in so little time, and everybody from the uh, Santa's Little Gamers is dead, and the Nexus is already exposed. I have a feeling that this might spell the end of our tournament. Could be. Oh. Um, I'm, I guess Garen is already hitting Nexus, and yes, I believe that's GG. Congratulations yes, to indeed. Snow Slappers. Yes, the Silent Knights actually managing to take home this okay. victory as well. Um, and I think that makes them an unbeaten team. Uh, leaving Blue yes. Side with a 100% win rate, definitely, but an unbeaten team. They win every single game, sweep the tournament very, very clean from the side of um, the Silent Knights. 
Um, Fixit managed to put out the most damage in the game. Um, it didn't look like he was doing much, but he definitely behind the screens was having a large oh. impact. So that's poke. Um, yeah, very very well played. Um, congratulations to the side at night, Slays for Quinton 555, the Tiger, Mr. Ties 12, and Fixit for winning this tournament in a 4 0 fashion. Um, they will be taking home the very fabulous, um, I'll bring it back up, let me give you, give you a second, the very fabulous Christmas Poro bag, wow, such price, it's still on its way, so we're going to get it um, in halfway January, but we'll definitely update the team as soon as we get them, um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching us on, uh, uh, on Twitch, um, I think maybe we can uh, pull off a, um, um, let me have a look, uh, I'll stop screwing. There we go. Maybe we can pull off a quick interview with the team. In fact, I'm going to be hopping into the Side at Nights' um, chat. Uh, Jen, you can join me if you want. I'm going to see what they have to say. Hello, yeah, boys. Man. How are you doing? Oh, the invade interview. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise interview. We are, we are doing mighty fine. Yeah. Yeah, congratulations to you, of course, winning the entire team and, and just sweeping it, uh, the entire tournament, not dropping a single game. Uh, how did you do it? Yeah, so... Um, just fine. Yeah, just fi no, well, okay, okay. So this is how it went. Um, in every champion select, we were like, "Wow, they have a lot of CC and a lot of tanks." And yeah, I don't know how we're gonna win this game. And then we're like in game, and then we fight, and then we win. And yeah, that's yeah. that's pretty, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it went. <laughs> and also that that last game was like, hmm, they sure do have a lot of tanks and damage and scary life steal. And and oh, we win. <laughs> and, and it was like, you, you know. We have do we just have a lot of damage like misfortune just keeps throwing our e and then they they were like stacked with five on each other and then I just throw my e and then it <laughs> their health health were drops with ten percent you know it's, yep. it's yeah it, it's the slow burn yeah definitely and in the first game we saw you actually win through uh, on the back of on the, for example a slacer twenty hitting a lot of Shivana yeah. damage with this e yeah um, that was insane. <laughs> So, so we didn't get to catch your second game. In fact, the the, the, the winner semi-finals, quote unquote. Uh, is it ah. some, yeah, something? Uh, so, how did that one go? Did you win it, win it the same style, or was it close? Yeah. So same in style. this game, yeah. So this in, in this game we had Ash, uh, Zaya, Graves, Jin, and Mundo, versus a um, Ivor and Cyan, Tom Kench, Folibear, uh, Poppy. So again, in champions, like we were like, whoa, they got a lot of tanks. They've got a lot of CC. How are we gonna do this? Because we we only have like AD damage and and like well some slow some sort of slow and some sort of poke, but really squishy. But but then again, I I just went uh, Ash with the uh, Imperial Mandate build where I just keep poking and hope something happens. Uh, and yeah, again like uh, like Quinton popped off in his graves and. We just kept poking them with everything we had, and then yeah, I, I, yeah. I was playing Mundo and I couldn't die like, against like four tanks. They don't have enough damage to kill Mundo, so I can just stay yeah. there and tank a lot of damage while the AD carriers kill everyone. Okay, cool. Well, um, congratulations once more to you. You win the awesome Christmas Poro bag. It will be shipped to you as soon as it arrives um, at my home. So I'll uh, keep you updated, keep you posted to that. Definitely. Very epic. Um, thank you for the interview. I'm gonna uh, round up the stream and uh, yeah, um, thanks for playing and uh, GG's. Right. Thanks for the fun uh, host of the tournament. No worries. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so here we are again, back to uh, the caster booth. Um, I'm going to round up the stream. Uh, John, do you have anything uh, you want to add to the to the stream as last words? Well, I believe it was a really nice tournament to watch. Especially, there are some matches that were just, you didn't really know who was going to win. It was really a surprise at the end, even though it wasn't really decided. Yeah, just really nice games, some very clean stuff. Uh, especially, I feel that, I feel fortunate that, you know, the normal games, like we mentioned, some people are just suiciding into oblivion. I didn't feel like we saw that. Everybody, everybody felt like they were like they. Even though it was random, everybody felt like they knew what was going on, and yeah, that was fun to watch. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so coming to the end of the stream, 
I'm going to wish everybody some very happy days, of course, uh, with Christmas coming up and New Year. So, uh, because in the Netherlands there's no uh, fireworks going on, uh, I think everybody gets to keep their fingers this year. So, uh, very glad to hear that uh, people can <laughs> be gaming in 2021. I hope 2021 brings us a better year than 2020. I don't think the bar is too high to to to, uh, to break, but you never know. So, uh, I'm not gonna. Um, I'm not going to say anything about it just yet. I hope it, uh, it's going to be a better year. So have some very uh, good Christmas. Um, stay distanced, stay safe, and a very happy new year. And with that, I want to finish off the stream. Uh, have a very good night, and bye-bye. Yep, good night. Merry Christmas. <laughs>